Okay, can you please check the audio if it's okay? Okay, let's start. Okay, last time nag-discuss tayo about finance lease on the part of the lessor under direct financing lease. Okay? So sabi natin, dalawa yan. Direct financing lease and sales type lease. Okay? So sa direct financing lease, ang sabi natin, there are three important formulas. One is the computation of the gross investments. Next, the computation of net investments and the computation of interest income. Okay? Sabi natin, under direct financing lease, net investment is equal to the cost of lease asset and the initial direct cost is a capitalizable cost. Okay? So, let's proceed sa pangalawa. Sa pangalawa, ang pinag-uusapan natin is sales type lease. Okay? This is concept map number 5. Under concept map number 5, Actually, kasama pa rin yung tatlo. Yung gross investments, net investments, saka interest income. Nadagdagan lang ng profit. Okay? Profit kasi merong sale. Okay? Sales type lease. So sabi natin in item number one, concept map, interest income plus profit or dealer's profit ang pinag-uusapan natin on this sales type lease. Since interest income kasama pa rin, so kasama pa rin itong tatlong formulas na ito. Nadagdagan lang ng profit. Okay? So, sales minus cost of sales, that is GP minus expenses, that is net profit. Okay. Now, under sales type lease, net investment is equal to your sales. Net investment is equal to your sales if the residual value is guaranteed. Next one, letter B, 6.B, the initial direct cost is treated as an expense. Okay. Initial direct cost is treated as expense. Okay. Sa lahat class ng lease, ng klase ng lease, Ang initial direct cost are capitalizable cost. Dito lang siya bukod tangi that the initial direct cost is treated as an expense. Okay. Last last one, last concept, last concept under sales type lease, the treatment of residual value na. If the residual value is guaranteed, the present value of the guaranteed residual value is added to sales. Well, if that is unguaranteed, unguaranteed the present value of the unguaranteed residual value is deducted to your cost of sales. Okay? Let's now go to problem solving. Puntahan natin yung handout ninyo. Okay. Uh, ang last item na na-discuss natin, itong accounting for residual value under direct financing lease or number 81 pala. Okay, the equipment will revert back. Ito yung number 81 that is the last item sold last meeting. Let's now go to sales type lease. Sa sales type lease, kung mapapansin mo class, number 82, ang hinahanap niya pa rin magkano ang gross investment Next, magkano ang net investment, tapos magkano ang uh, interest income. Okay? So, ang nadagdag lang naman dito, class, magkano ang gross profit from sale at magkano ang net profit from sale. Okay? Can you please solve muna requirement number 82 to, 82 to 84? Habang hinihintay natin yung iba. This is gross investment, net investment, and interest income. Wala po yung pinagkaiba. 
doon sa direct financing list na pinag-usapan natin last Monday. Okay? So, can you please compute number 82, 83, and 84? Magkano ang gross investment, net investment, and the total interest income? After getting the answers, pakipost class dun sa chat box. So, ilan na ba tayo ngayon? Let me check. 38. Okay, just to recall, gross investment, that is your lease payments, no? Lease payments plus the unguaranteed residual value. Ang lease payments natin, kung mapasok dyan si fixed rental payments, variable rental payments, you have your residual value. Eka, may sumagot na ba? Okay, you have your residual value. Tapos yung pinag-uusapan natin penalties. Okay? So, plus the unguaranteed residual value. So in item number one, ang pumasok lang naman sa, lease, uh, sa gross investment natin, yung lease payments lang naman. Wala naman class pinag-usapan dito na residual value. Okay? So ang pumasok lang dito is the fixed rental payments of 400,000. So 400,000, 400,000 times 4 years, no? Times 4 years, that is 1.6. Nga lang class, this is at the start of each year. So, uh, dun muna tayo sa ano, dun muna tayo sa how much is the gross investment in the lease on January 1, 20x1. Let me check kung nandun na kung pareho yung problem sa Excel. Okay class, siguro ito na lang isolve natin yung problem. Pareho din naman yun sa kabila, no? So at least nasa Excel na ako dito. So ito na lang, ito na lang yung problem natin. Kasi kompleto na ito. Nandito si residual value at si unguaranteed residual value. Okay? Balikan natin mamaya yung isang problem kasi mas madali lang naman yun. Okay. So dito tayo ngayon. So nandito tayo class, no? So na... Uh, Huwag mo na lang pansinin yung numbering. Actually, pareho ito dun sa second problem ninyo. Okay? Dun sa second problem ng accounting for sales type leads. Okay, let's proceed now. Let's compute now for the requirements in this problem. Okay? So, ang tinatanong pa rin, magkano ang gross invest investment natin, magkano net investment, at magkano interest income, okay, over the lease term. So, dito class, kung papansinin natin to sabi natin, ang gross investment, these are lease payments plus the guaranteed residual value. Okay? So, let us check. One, sa lease payments, pumasok dyan ang annual rental payments. Okay? Annual rental payments, that is fixed payments. Magkano yan? That is 400,000 class. Okay? So, 400,000 times 4 years, meaning magkano ang lease payments natin? That is a fixed uh, payments of 400,000 times 4, that is... 1.6 million. Okay? This is 1.6 million. 
So, 1,600,000. Wala namang advance payment class. Next, let's proceed. Sabi natin, papasok lang ang residual value sa part ng lease payments kapag guaranteed siya and the asset will revert back to the lessor at the end of the lease term. Pansinin mo klas yung dito na nasa ilalim. The equipment will revert back at the end of the lease term. The equipment will be revert back to Pabet at the end of the lease term. Ibig sabihin class, pasok siya doon sa lease payments natin. Ulitin ko. The two requirements na papasok ang residual values as part of the lease payments. One, kapag guaranteed siya and the lease asset will revert back to the lessor at the end of the lease term. Meaning, this 80,000, papasok siya as part ng ating lease payment. So, 80,000. Ibig sabihin, class, ang sagot natin sa gross investment, that is 1.68 million. Gross investment, January 1, 20X1, is 1.68 million. Let's now proceed. Ang sabi natin, ang net investment is just the present value of the lease payments plus the present value of the unguaranteed residual value. Since wala naman ang guaranteed residual value dito, titingin lang tayo dun sa present value ng lease payments. Ang pumasok lang sa lease payments natin, one, yung fixed rental payments at yung guaranteed residual value. And that fixed rental payments, computein natin yung present value niyan. Okay? The present value of an ordinary annuity or of an ordinary annuity okay, at 10% n is equal to 4. The factor for that is 3.169865. Well, the present value factor of 1, with the present value factor of 1 at 10%, okay, n4 is 0 0.683013. Okay? So this 400,000 multiply natin and 80,000, i-multiply din natin yan, present value factor of 1, makukuha natin yung net investment amounting to 1,322,587. Okay? That is re requirement number 2 or the net investment. Next, tinatanong ka ng total interest income or the finance income that is just GINI. Gross investment minus your net investment. Ito kasi ang net investment mo. Okay? So, ibig sabihin class, the gross investment of 1.68 million minus 1.322587, ang lalambas na interest income mo ay 357,413. 357,413. Okay? Ihahang po ito class yung number 38 dito sa problem natin. Sir, sir paano po ulit yun? Anong yun G yan? Yung 37. Uh, this is just gross investment minus uh, gross investment 1.68 minus 1322587. Okay? Okay, that is your interest income. Yan din yung ginagawa natin class nung nasa direct financing list tayo. Okay? Kinocompute natin ng interest income, gross investment minus your net investment. Now, ibalik kita sa problem. Mamaya tayo mag-proceed dito. Okay? Diyan sa meron ng bentahan kasi kailangan master muna natin paano pag-compute ng interest income. Okay? Balik tayo dun sa problem natin kanina. Okay, dito tayo class. Kung mapapansin mo class, yung sinold natin problem, ito yon, Okay? Yung nasa Excel, ito yung kanina, yung tatlo. So, nandito tayo ngayon. Magkano ang gross investment? Kompleto na tayo. Pwede na, no? Sa chat box. Magkano ang gross investment January 1? Magkano ang net investment January 1? At magkano ang interest income? Okay, over the term of the lease in item 84. Please compute now for the requirements in number 82 to 84, then post your answers in the chat box.
Okay, class. Let's proceed. Kung papansin, papansinin mo ito, class, meron itong tinatawag na, may tinatawag itong advance, no? Advance payments. Start of each year. So, magkano ang gross investment natin? Gross investment natin, class, ulitin ko lang ang formula. That is the lease payments plus the unguaranteed residual value. Ang lease payments natin, these are fixed rental payments, variable rental payments, you have your purchase option, guaranteed residual value, at yung termination penalties. Okay? Ang gross investment natin dito is 400,000 times 4. However, there is an advance payment of 400,000. So 1.6 minus 400,000, ang sagot natin dyan class, is 1.2 million for number 82. Next, punta tayo sa net investment natin. So ang net investment natin, that is 400,000, ang factor natin dyan class is 3.48 something, no? 3.48 something. So that is 400,000 times 3.48. May makukuha ka dyan na 1 million. 394,740 nga lang ang sabi natin ibawas mo dyan yung advance payment na 400,000. So ang sagot natin sa number 83 that is 994,780 parang ganun. 780, 740 yan. 994,740 for number 83. At yung interest income natin, tama yung sagot ng class, that is 205,260. Okay? 205,260 or 259. Punta tayo ngayon sa item 85. Magkano ang gross profit from sale? Okay? Magkano ang gross profit from sale? Okay. Ang sabi natin kanina class, under sales type lease, under sales type lease, your net investment is equal to your sales. Your net investment is equal to your sales. Last time, pinag-usapan natin, ang sabi natin, net investment under direct financing lease is equal to the cost of your lease asset prior to any deduction related to advance payments. Ulitin ko, under direct financing lease, sabi natin last time, the net investment is equal to the cost of your lease asset prior to any deduction related to advance payments. Pagdating dito sa sales type lease, net investment, net investment is equal, is equal to your sales prior to any deduction related to the advance payments. So ibig sabihin plus, Para makuha mo dito ang gross profit, magsisimula ka sa sales. So ang sales mo dito, magkano ba, pakitype plus ha, pakitype sa chat box, magkano ba ang net investment natin prior to any deduction related to advance payments? Pakitype plus, magkano ang net investment natin prior to any deduction okay? or advance payments? So, yung 1,394,740 class, yan ang sales mo. Okay? Yan ang magiging sales mo. Okay? Your sales now is 1,394,740. Ipeg na natin at 740, no? Minus the cost of 1.2 million. Minus the cost of the equipment of 1.2 million. So, your gross profit now is 194,740. Okay, your gross profit is 194,740. Kaya niya class hiniwalay dito yung number 85 and number 86 kasi gusto niyang malaman kung alam mo ba kung ano ang treatment ng initial direct cost. Initial direct cost under sales type this is treated as an expense. Okay? So sales mo is 139,740 minus the cost of your equipment of 1.2 binenta. So, the gross profit here is 194,740. That is 139,440 minus 1.2. That is 194,740. Then, magkano ang net profit mo? Your net profit, since meron kang initial direct cost, and initial direct cost is treated as an expense under sales type lease, your net profit now is... 194,740 minus 80,000. Magkano ba yun? 100, 
14,740. So, 114,740 or 41, that is your answer in number 86. Okay? Let's now proceed to the next item. Our next item, ito yung pinag-uusapan natin na nasa Excel. Ibalik kita class dun sa Excel. Okay. So, dito sa Excel natin class, ganun ulit yan, magkano ang gross investment, net investment, and the total interest income, and the annual rent payable here is at the end of each year. So, na-compute na natin class. Okay. So, na-compute na natin class in 357,413. May tanong, sir, 1.2 po, is that yung 80, 82? Sagot sa 82, balik natin, Gia, na? Or yung cost of equipment sa given, that is just the cost of equipment. Balik ko lang, class, na? Okay. Okay, ito yung Gia, na? The 1.2 million, 82, na? 82. The 1.2 million is just the cost of equipment. So yung, is that yung sagot sa 82? Ang sagot natin sa 82 is, uh, hindi, hindi yun. Kinumpit natin yung nagkataon lang yan. Nagkataon lang. Nagkataon lang yan, Gian. Okay? Nagkataon lang na 1.2 din. Sige. Sige. Let's proceed with the next problem in Excel. Ayan. So, okay na, Gian? Nagkataon lang yan, ha? Okay, let's proceed. So, dito, uh, the interest income is 357,430. Okay? Ito na ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon. Okay? So, kung tingnan yung numbers kasi magkaiba tayo ng numbering dun sa handout natin. Just focus on the requirements of the problem. Magkano ang sales at ang cost of sale if the residual value is guaranteed? Ano ang sabi natin? This is the silent rule, no? Nandito siya. Under sales type lease, your net investment is equal to your sales. No? That net investment should be prior to any related deduction related to advance payments. Meron pang nakalagay dyan, if the residual value is guaranteed. So, eto class, yung residual value is guaranteed. Ito yung part na yan. Ito yung unguaranteed natin. What if the residual value is guaranteed? Ang sabi natin, sales type lease is equal to the net investment okay, prior to the any deduction of advance payments. May isa pang requirement if the residual value is guaranteed. Kung mapapansin mo class, ang magiging sales mo dito, yung net investment mo na 1,322,000 587. Okay? Net investment is equal to your sales if the residual value is guaranteed and the net investment here should be prior to any deduction on advance payments. Dito class, wala namang advance payments kaya safe na 1322587. Ngayon, paano nakuha yung 1322587? Ang sabi natin class, if the residual value is guaranteed. No? The present value of the guaranteed residual value is added to sales. Balik kita sa concept map. Okay? The treatment of the residual value is what? If the residual value is guaranteed, the present value of the guaranteed residual value is added to sales. While if the residual value is unguaranteed, the present value of the unguaranteed residual value is deducted to your cost of sales. Okay. Balik tayo sa problem. Okay. If the residual value is guaranteed, ano ang sabi ng concept? The present value of the guaranteed residual value is added to sales. Ganito yan class. Okay. Kaya mo na compute yung 1, 3, 2, 2, 5, 8, 7 kasi Ginamit mo yung present value ng fixed payments at ginamit mo class yung present value ng guaranteed residual value. Yung 1267947 plus 54, the present value of the guaranteed residual value is added to sales, sabi niya, kaya ang nagiging sales mo is 
5, 8, 7. Para mas malinaw, tatanungin kita ng isa, isang tanong. Kapag daw unguaranteed residual value, the present value of the unguaranteed residual value is deducted, is deducted to cost of sales. Okay. Ito na class ang tanong ko. If the resid if if under uh, if the residual value is guaranteed, your sales is one three two two five eight seven. What if your residual value is unguaranteed? How much is your sales? Yun ang tanong. Under uh, if the residual value is guaranteed, okay. Your sales is equal to one three two two five eight seven. What if your residual value is unguaranteed? What is now your sales? Yan. Okay. So ganito ah. Para mapaliwanag natin yung silent ruling or silent assumption, ang sabi kasi doon, your net investment is equal to your sales, okay? If the residual value is guaranteed. Because the treatment of the guaranteed residual value is added to sales. Kung ganun pala ang gusto niyang sabihin class, ito yan. This is your unadjusted sales and this is your uh, addition to sales. Present value of the guaranteed residual value is added to sales. Kaya nakukuha mo yung 1322587. Okay? Kaya yung sales mo na yan, that is equal to your net investment if the residual value is guaranteed. If the residual value is unguaranteed, ano ang sabi natin? The present value of your guaranteed residual value, which is this, is what? That is deducted to cost of sales. Na? Deducted to cost of sales. Ibig sabihin class, magkano ang sales mo kapag unguaranteed ang residual value? May iwan lang ito. Yang 1267946 and that is your sales if the residual value is unguaranteed. Under this item, if the residual value is guaranteed, magkano ang cost of sales mo? That is 1.2. Okay? If the residual value is unguaranteed, what is your cost of sales? Magbabago yan class. Kasi your 1.2 million, mababawasan yan ng ano, 54,641. Bakit? Kasi ang sabi ng concept, if the present value is unguaranteed, okay, if the residual value, I mean, is unguaranteed, the present value of the unguaranteed residual value is deducted to your cost of sales. Okay? So your cost of sales, if the residual value is unguaranteed, that is 1,145,000. 357. Okay? So, ang sales mo dito is 1267946. Okay? So, class, huwag kang mag-alala. Bakit? Kasi ang kadalasang tinatanong dito, class, magkano ang gross profit recognized on the list, which is the last item. Okay? Ito yun, ha? Nasagot na natin itong dalawa, no? How much is the sales and cost of sales if the residual value is guaranteed? The sales is 1322587 and the cost of sale is 1.2 if the residual value is guaranteed. If the residual value is unguaranteed, your sales is 1267946 and your cost of sales is 1145359. Ito kalas ang kadalasang tinatanong yung last item. Magkano ang gross profit recognized on the lease? Whether guaranteed or unguaranteed class, whether guaranteed or unguaranteed, hindi magbabago ang profit mo. Okay? Your profit, whether the residual value is guaranteed or unguaranteed, that remains at 122,587. No, 122,587. Okay? So, yan lang naman yung sa ating sales type list. Ang nagdagdag lang dyan class is the computation of the profit. At tandaan class, tandaan natin ha? Tandaan natin na 
ang initial direct cost is treated as an expense under sales type lease. Okay? Balik tayo sa concept map, pag-usapan natin yung finance lease on the part of the lessee. Though na-discuss ko na ito last time, pero pag-usapan ulit natin. Okay, concept map tayo dito. So, aakit lang ako. Ha? This is the finance lease on the part of the lessee. Ulitin ko lang ng mabilis class. No? Mabilis lang to. Just to recall. No? Sabi natin, there are two classification of lease. That is finance lease and operating lease. The finance lease is a classification of lease that substantially transfers all the risks and rewards related to the ownership of the lease asset. Okay? While operating lease is a classification of lease other than finance lease. Okay? Under the standards, there are four major indicators para masabing finance lease. At pag nasatisfy ang kahit isa sa mga ito, finance lease na siya. One, transfer of ownership, purchase option, that is bargain purchase option. The 75% rule, 75% rule wherein the lease term is at least 75% versus the remaining useful life of the lease asset. The 90% rule that is letter D, that the present value of the lease payments is at least 90% versus the fair value of the asset at the inception of the lease. Actually, meron pang pang lima yan. Yung pang lima, if the lease asset is, 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 ano, is specialized, is specialized in nature. Ibig sabihin, wala nang ibang makakagamit nun kung di ikaw kasi ginawa lang yan talaga para sa'yo. No? That is the classification of lease wherein the lease asset is specialized in nature. Parang ganun. So, that, those are the indicators of finance lease. No? So, sabi natin, the lease payments includes five. One, the fixed rental payments, variable rental payments, the purchase option which should be exercisable, guaranteed residual value and penalties in terminating the lease. This guaranteed residual value to be included as part of the lease payments, it must satisfy the two requirements. One, it must be guaranteed and the lease asset must be brought back to the lessor at the end of the lease term. To compute now for the present value of the lease payments, you will use the implicit rate. Implicit rate in identifying the present value factor. Do not use the incremental borrowing rate. The incremental borrowing rate will only be, will only be used in the absence of implicit rate. Just the same, ang sabi ko last time, to compute for the present value, you will use the present value fund for the pan annuity under fixed and variable rental payments because it involves series of payments or installment payments. It may be ordinary or annuity due depending on the first lease payments. If the date of transaction did not coincide with the date of the first lease payment, that is ordinary annuity. On the other hand, if the date of transaction coincides with the date of first lease payments, that is an annuity due. Okay? Itong purchase option, guaranteed residual value and penalties, this relates to the end of the lease term. Purchase option can be exercised at the end of the lease term. Next, guaranteed residual value. Guaranteed residual value is the guaranteed amount of the lease asset at the end of the lease term. Penalties in terminating the lease, this involves the option of the lessee on, on the termination of the lease in the succeeding year. No? Succeeding year po yan. So, doon pinag-uusapan kung kailan siya pwedeng i-terminate. So, present value factor of one yan. Okay? So, let's now go to the accounting of this. Okay? Sabi natin, papasok ang lease liability at yung right of use of asset or the ROA. The present value of the lease payments will be the initial measurement of your liability that should be subsequently measured using the effective interest method of amortization to come up with the amortized cost. The right of use of assets involves these several factors. One, the present value of the lease payments, that, 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 that is one. Next, the advance payments minus the incentives, if any, kung merong advance payments, no? minus incentives. Initial direct cost and the present value of the decommissioning and restoration cost and that will be the initial measurement of your right of use of asset. Okay? That ROA should be subsequently measured at cost. Okay? So at carrying value, I mean at carrying value. Okay? To compute for that, you will use just the straight line method of 
depreciation. This is your cost minus accumulated depreciation and this is your carrying value. However, the computation of your depreciation expense is dependent on what indicator that the lease, kung ano yung nasatisfy niya. If there is a chance or possibility that the lease asset will be transferred to the lessee at the end of the lease term, we will use the denominator useful life in identifying the depreciation expense. On the other hand, if there is no chance that the lease asset will be transferred to the lessee at the end of the lease term, we will use the short term between the useful life and the lease term as your denominator. This residual value can only be deducted. Okay, this will this can be deducted. Okay, whether guaranteed or unguaranteed, pwedeng i-deduct yan. Kung ang nasatisfy ng requirement ay yung one or two, or there is a possibility that the lease asset will be transferred to the lessee at the end of the lease term. Whether guaranteed or unguaranteed, din na deduct yan. If there is no chance that the lease asset will be transferred to the lessee at the end of the lease term, then i-deduct mo lang ang residual value kapag guaranteed lang yun to come up with the depreciation expense. The last item for this concept map, ito, sinabi ko na yung requirements na yan, 1 and 2, itong pangatlo, executory cost is treated as an expense. And this is just the concept, okay? The finance list on the part of the lesson. Sir, ano po ulit yung lower? Lower between the useful life, useful life of the lease asset and the lease term. This should be short term. Short term. Short term between... If there is no chance that the lease asset will be transferred to the lessee at the end of the lease term, you will use the shorter between useful life and the lease term. Okay? So this 3 and 4 relates to this 75% and 90% rule. This indicator will not tell you that there is a possibility that the lease asset will be transferred to the lessee at the end of the lease term. If this indicator ay ang nasatisfy niya, nagpo-fall siya dito. Okay? Paano sir, kapag 2 ang nasatisfy, purchase option, nasatisfy din 75% rule. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, if there is a possibility that the lease asset would be transferred to the lessee at the end of the lease term, use useful life. So in that case, ang gagamitin mo sa example kong huli na nagsama ang number 2 at number 3, you will use the useful life because there is a purchase option that is exercisable, meaning the lease asset can be or there is a chance that the lease asset can be transferred to the lessor at the end of the lease term. Okay? So meron akong ginawang problem dito. Ito yung ginamit natin noon siguro nung nasa modab kayo, no? Babalikan ko lang. Okay. So, ito class. Okay? Tulungan na lang natin. Tulong na lang tayo. So, ang requirements dito ng finance list list si problem number 1 to 5 isa lang. Okay? 1. Mag-compute ka ng carrying amount ng list liability January 1. Next, mag-compute ka ng carrying value of the list liability December. Next, mag-compute ka ng carrying value ng ARWA mo January 1. Next, mag-compute ka ng carrying value ng asset mo, okay, ng asset, eh? ng asset natin at December 31. And this interest expense, ang lease liability and depreciation expense, mahahanap na natin yan pag nagawa mo na ito. Okay? So, bigyan natin ng background yung first problem natin. Yung first problem natin, class, this is a finance lease in the part of the lessee. Okay? Kaya hinahanap niya dito yung 1, uh, carrying value ng liability, January 1 and December 31. Tapos hinahanap niya rin dito magkano ba ang iyong carrying value ng right of use of asset ng January 1 at December 31. Okay. Ang sabi dito class, babasahin natin, 1, letter A, sabi niya, the company entered into a contract with Mobile Legend, which is the lessee, no? Si Everwing ang kanyang lessor that conveys the right of use of asset, huh? which is an office building for a period daw of five years in exchange for annual lease payments of 1 million payable every January 1, 2021. So meaning, ingat ka dito class kasi 
ano ito no meron siyang advance payments no these payments is every january 1 of each year okay letter b tayo mobile legend pay the first this payment due on january 1 and an annual executory cost of 35,000. Okay, sabi natin plus 35,000 is what? That is considered as an expense, outright expense. However, this initial direct cost of 100,000, that is a capitalizable cost on the part of the ARWA, no? right of use of asset. On the same date, Everwing Company makes the underlying available, underlying asset available for use by Mobile Legend. Moreover, Mobile Legend Company received a 350,000 worth of lease incentive. Plus, ha, merong lease incentive dito. That is what? That is a deduction to your right of use of asset. Next, the billing is, is expected. Na? Expected to be used for 8 years. Na? Letter E, they also agreed that by the end of the lease term, the ownership, the ownership of the underlying asset will be transferred to Mobile Legend Company. Plus, letter E is an indicator of finance lease. There is what? A transfer of ownership. No? So this is really a finance lease. Letter F, the contract also provides that Mobile Legend will have to restore. Restore the underlying asset to the condition required by the terms and conditions of the lease. These costs were estimated to be 200,000. Ano That is the restoration cost and the present value of this 200,000 is among the consideration in getting your ROA. Okay? Balik natin glass. Okay? Pansinin mo dito, yan class. You have the present value of the lease liability. Okay? Advanced payments, incentives, Initial direct cost, present value of the commissioning, and restoration cost. Ito yung class. Okay? Present value of the commissioning and restoration cost. Okay? Balik tayo sa Excel. Okay. Ito na yung class. So, letter G, the implicit rate is 10%. The implicit rate is 10%. Okay? So, Upon reading, after reading A to F, A to G, alam natin that this is a finance lease kasi may nasatisfy na indicator ng finance lease which is what? The transfer, no? The transfer of ownership under letter E. So, dito class, kung mapapansin mo, this is your lease liability. Ang tinatanong class dito, what is the carrying amount of the lease liability January 1? When we say carrying amount class, ang pinag-uusapan natin then that should be net of any net of any advance payments no net of any advance payments now these are the components of your lease payments these are five components the fixed payments variable the purchase option residual value and the penalties in terminating the lease so problem number one natin class isa lang naman ang lumutang dyan ano lang yan that is your fixed payments no that is one million pesos yan lang naman yung class Merong lumutang class na 1 million pesos. Okay? So, this is the factor class. Kung mapapansin mo class, the 3,169,865 that is already what? That is already the carrying value. Kasi ang ginamit natin the, fa the factor dyan is not advance payments. Tinanggal ko na. Tinanggal na natin. Kasi ang hinahanap niya class is January 1 carrying amount. Kung pupunta ko dito sa present value Amortization natin, amortization table natin, this is the present value of the lease January 1. However, there is an advance payments of 1 million, advance payment na 1 million, kaya ang carrying value ng liability natin ay 3,169,865. Okay? That is the carrying value of the lease liability January 1, 2021. Okay? So, let's now proceed. Ako muna dito sa problem number one. Then, I will let you solve in the next few problems siguro. Okay? So, yan na. Nahanap ko na kung magkano yung requirement number one that is the carrying value of the lease liability January 1. Ang sinusunod niyang hinahanap, what is the carrying value of the R1? No? R1 January 1. Okay? So, one, kasama dyan class yung carrying value ng liability natin. 
carrying volume ng liability natin which is 3.16. Advance payments natin plus meron, no? Advance payments of 1 million. Kung natatandaan mo yung problem, there is an advance payments of 1 million. Okay, nasaan yun? Ito yun, advance payments of 1 million kasi sabi niya at the start of each year. Minus any incentives, no? Incentive of 350,000, ibig sabihin plus, this is your advance payments net of incentives. Okay? So, paano sir, kung halimbawa walang advance payments? Kung walang advance payments plus, okay lang yun. Basta ibawas mo yung incentives, no? Laging binabawas ang incentive sa pag-compute ng ROI. Let's proceed. Initial direct cost, initial direct cost of 100,000. Sinabi niya yan, that is a capitalizable cost. Okay? Next, the present value of the debt commissioning and restoration cost that is under letter F. Letter F says that there is an estimation, estimated restoration cost of 200,000. Nga lang plus, the 200,000 is applicable when? Diba? At the end of the this term pa. Kaya kinocompute mo dyan yung present value niya. You will just use, will, it, will just use the present value factor of 1. That, it's, that is 1.10, dalawang divide, limang equals, the factor is 0 0.620921. So that is 200,000 times the factor of 0 0.062. Makukuha mo kunas kung magkano yung present value ng decommissioning and restoration and this is now the initial measurement of your ROA. Okay? Next, pupunta ngayon ako dun sa depreciation. Okay? Dun sa carrying value ng list liability or carrying value ng ROA natin ng December 30. Okay? So, this is your January 1 ROA. Okay? This is your January 1 list liability. Using the effective interest method of amortization. Okay? So, diretso lang ako dito. No? Ganyan lang yan. Okay? This is times 10%. 10%. Wala namang amortization January, December 1 kasi magbabayad pa ng January 1. So, dito kulas wala tayong problema. Wala tayong problema dito sa 3.486. This is just the amortization table. Na? So, this is the subsequent measurement of your lease liability. Sir, paano po ulit nakuha yung 650,000? This 650,000 came from what? Advance payments of 1 million. Advance payments of 1 million minus the incentive. Okay? Lagay natin. So, this is 1 million and the incentive amounting to 350,000. Okay? So that is 1 million minus 350,000 nakuha natin yung 650,000 pesos. Okay? Tanong class. Ngayon magko-compute na ako ng subsequent measurement ng ating asset. Okay. Magko-compute na ako class ng depreciation. Tanong. Tanong. Ano ano ang denominator ko dito? Ilang number of years? ang denominator ko dito. Is that 5 years or 8 years? 5 years this term or 8 years useful life? Ano ang denominator na gagamitin ko to compute for the depreciation? Yan class. Since there is a possibility that the lease asset will be transferred to the lessee at the end of the lease term, you will use useful life. Okay? So, wala namang class na binigay na residual value dito class. So, meaning, ang depreciation natin is just 4,044,049,20 divided by 8 years. So, the depreciation expense for 20x1 is 505,506.15. So, the carrying value of your asset, December 31, is 3,000,000. 538,543.05. Okay? Ganyan siya class, no? So, pansinin mo, ang ginamit lang natin dito, yung konseptong pinag-aralan natin kanina. Okay? So, class dito, ah, pag-usapan natin, this should be the carrying value of the liability. Okay? Ito class, yung concept map, ah, uh, Para magkaroon ng emphasis, baka kasi sundan mo ng gusto, 
that present value of the lease payments na pinag-uusapan natin dyan, that should be the carrying value, no? carrying value of the liability. Okay? Ang assumption kasi dito sa konsepto ay what? At the end of each year, no? kapag mayroong advance payment plus, ha? laging pag tinanong, ha? pag tinanong, what is your lease liability January 1, that should be the carrying value of the liability. No? Unless natatanungin niya sa'yo, what is the present value of the lease liability January 1, referring to the initial measurement of the lease liability. Pag ganun kasi plus ang tanong, gusto niya lang malaman yung konsepto, which is what? What is actually the initial measurement of the liability January 1. Pero in any other case, kapag tinanong January 1 class, lagi mo i-consider doon yung advance payment na idagdag mo. Kasi ang utang talaga ng January 1, since nagbayad ng January 1 ng isang milyon, actually class, bawas na talaga yun ng isang milyon. Okay, kaya kung mapapansin mo, ginamit ng example dito, advance payments na kaagad. Kasi kapag ang ginamit ko at the end of each year, malilito ka eh. Ibig sabihin baka mas madali kasi ang at the end of each year. Walang problema. Because the present value of the lease liability and the carrying value of the lease liability January 1, pareho lang yun kasi wala namang advance payments. No? So, para mas ma mas gumanda yung konsepto natin, puntahan natin si problem number 2. Okay? Itong problem number 2, tatakpan ko lang yung sinagotan ko kanina no? para makapag-exercise tayo. Okay, dito sa problem number 2, tingnan natin. Sabi dyan, ganun pa rin naman si A, no? 5 years pa rin, at the start of each year pa rin, isang milyon, meron pa rin executory cost na 35,000, at meron pa rin initial direct cost na 100,000. At meron pa rin incentive plus na 350,000 dito. Ulitin ko, incentives are always deducted in computing the carrying value of your ARWA. Na? So, tuloy natin. Again, the useful life is 8 years. Letter E, agreed to a purchase option. Okay? Purchase option with an exercise price of 500,000 that is reasonably certain to be exercised. Ingat ka klas, ha? The purchase option should be exercisable, no? Kasi pag sinabi ng problem na wala namang intention na i-exercise ang purchase option, that is not an indicator of finance list. Okay? That should be exercisable. That is reasonably certain to be exercised by mobile legend by the end of this term. So in letter E, napalitan kasi kanina transfer of ownership in problem number 1 while in problem number 2, it now indicates that there is a purchase option which is the an indicator to become a finance lease. Okay? In letter F, sabi niya dito, there is a restoration cost of 200,000 and an implicit rate of 10%. Now, tanong, magkano ang Initial measurement or ito class. What is the carrying value of the lease liability January 1? What is the carrying value of the lease liability January 1? Bigay ko na sa yung una, no? Kasi ito, kinumpit na natin kanina, no? Okay? Kinumpit na natin kanina ito. Kung mapapansin mo, that is also 3.16. Okay? Kasi kanina class, kinakita ko sa'yo, Dineretso ko na sa 3.16, ginamit ko yung factor na 3.16, no? Dito kasi class, baka nagtantaka ka, gumamit ako ngayon na advance. Pinakita ko lang sa iyo class na ang sagot talaga is 3.16. That is less of any advance payments, no? That is 1 million times 4.16 minus the advance payment of 1 million, which is what? Which is the carrying value of your lease payments na January 1. So, huwag mo itong sundin. Parang mali yata. Eh. Okay? Ay, hindi. Tama yan. Kasi meron pang ano, meron pang isa na consideration. This is just for lease payments. Ha? For rental, fixed rental payments. That is 1 million times 4.16 since this is an annuity due minus the advance payment of 1 million. The carrying value of this fixed payment is 3.16865 still. Kung gusto mo mas mapadali ka dyan, gamitin mo yung track factor na 3.16 na lang. Okay? Ang tinatanong ko ngayon, what is the 
carrying bad of the least liability, January 1, can you please solve? Kasi class, in this lease payments, lease liability, hindi lang naman fixed rental payments ang pumasok. Okay? Pumasok din dyan yung walang variable lease payments class. Ang pumasok is purchase option. No? Purchase option. Okay? So, okay. Your purchase option that is 500,000 times what? times the present value factor of 1 at 10% N5. Least term, oh? lagi kang least term. Oh? Wag kang, wag, ang gagamitin mo ng present value dito class, ha? laging least term. Baka malito ka, ha? may gumamit dyan sa exam, ginamit na ano, useful life. Pag class, kasi pinag-uusapan natin dito, least liability. So meaning, gano'n ba katagal ang least term? Okay? So, the answer for that is 3,480,000 325.50 na? Yes, diyan lagi yon, laging list term ang gagamitin para sa pagkuha ng present value factor. Okay? So mapapansin mo dito, ito 'yan, oh. Ayun 'yan. Kasi ang present value na class, January 1 without considering any advance payments, without considering any advance payments, ito 'yon. Nga lang class may advance payments yan, kaya naging 3,480,525.50. Sir, bakit po 4.169? Ah, pinakita ko lang dito, G, yan, na since annuity due, annuity due, no? Annuity due ang problem natin, advance payment, kaya ginamit ko yung factor na annuity due. Pero, G, yan, sabi ko nga, lagi mo ako consider to deduct any advance payments. Kaya ang ginawa dito, that is 1 million times 4.16, pero nag-deduct pa rin dyan ng isang million advance payment. Okay? Yan. So, your carrying value here is 3.48 million something. Okay, let's proceed. Can you please solve now? Can you please solve now? Magkano ang ating ARWA or right of use of asset January 1, 20X1? So the carrying bond of first lease liability, yan na, na-compute na natin. 3,480,325.50. Ang hinahanap ko ngayon, magkano ang arwa natin, January 1. Okay, still, itong advance payments natin minus the incentive that is 650,000. Then, this is your initial direct cost of 100,000 capitalizable cost. Okay? This should be at present value. No? At present value, that is, kanina rin yan. That is 124,184. This is 454, 510, or 509.70. Let's proceed. Okay? Ano ang denominator na gagamitin ko ngayon for depreciation expense? Is it 5 or 8? 5 or 8. Ayan. Still 8 kasi ang nasatisfy niya is purchase option wherein there is a chance or possibility that the lease asset will be transferred to the lessee at the end of the lease term. And that is, yeah, that is your depreciation expense. And this is your subsequent measurement ng asset mo. Okay? That's, that is item 2. Let's now go to item 3. Okay? This is your item 3. Again, takpan ko muna yung sagot natin. Okay. Let's go to item 3. In item 3 class, letter A, B, and C, hindi yan na bago. Sir, bakit yung restoration 5 years lagi? Ah, ganito yan. Ah, Fernando. Kasi ang end ng list term is 5th year. Ibig sabihin, uh, i-re-restore mo sa dating anyo. Sa dating anyo yung, yung, yung asset na yan, ano pa, kailan? At the end of the list term. And the list term is 5 years. Kaya laging 5 years ito. Sa problem natin, from problem 1 to item 2. Di ba mag-transfer naman sa'yo? So, di ba matransfer mat naman, sa, naman siya sa'yo? So, 8 years. So, 8 years. De, tapos na kasi. Tapos na yung, yung, uh, tapos na ang list term ng 5 years. 
no? Pero lahat ng computation sa us, ano yan? Only five years. Yan. Kasi magbabago. Hindi lagi, ha? Hindi lagi, ha? Kasi mamaya, tingnan natin. Tingnan mo yung mangyayari sa latter problem natin. Hindi laging five years. Okay? Sir, so bali yung UL, gagamitin lang po for depreciation purposes. Yes, yes, yes. For depreciation purposes. Okay? Kasi pagdating niyan, class, na pagtapos ng lease term at na-transfer na, ibang usapan na yun. Kasi that asset mo na yan. Okay? Ibig sabihin, ibang standards na ang gagamitin mo doon. Kung matatransfer yan sa'yo, magiging past 16 na yan. Okay? Yan yun siya. Fernando, ang ROA, sir, is only 5 years lagi. Ganun po. Hindi. Hindi laging 5 years. Okay? Kailan magiging hindi 5 years? Mamaya. May, may problem tayo dyan, Fernando, na hindi siya 5 years. Nasa problem 5 siya. Okay? Nasa problem 5. Okay. So, item 3 tayo. In, in item 3, letter E says, meron daw, oh, sige, A, B, and C class. Hindi ko nababasahin yan kasi pare-pareho lang yan. Na? In letter D, may correction dito. No? Ang correction dyan, this should be 6 years. The useful life of the asset should only be 6 years. Okay? Ito yun, correction, useful life, 6 years dapat yan. And the asset will revert back to the lessor at the end of the lease term and letter F, that is your restoration cost again of 200000 Okay? In this given item, again, I'm asking you to solve what is your lease liability, January 1. Lease liability, January 1. So, sa question ni Gian, pero lahat ng computation ka sa taas ng ARWA, puro list term, yes, Gian, puro list term. Yan. Balikan ko yung mga tanong. Okay. So, nando sa bakit 5 years? Di ba matransfer naman sa'yo? So, 8 years. Ah, ito yung, ano, Fernando. Letter F says, sabi niya, the contract provides that the mob mobile legend will have to restore. Okay, nasa kontrata at the end of the list term, no? So, yan yung, yan, kailangan sundin. That is part of the contract that should be restored at the end of the lease term. So, ibabalik mo. So, again, so magkano ang lease liability natin? January 1. Okay. Sige. Again, your fixed payments still, ganun pa rin yan. Diba? Yan pa rin. Yan. Okay. Walang variable payments, may residual value ba? Okay. Residual value, kailan siya papasok? No? One, that should be guaranteed. Guaranteed ba yan? Under residual value guarantees. That is guaranteed. The second requirement should be what? The asset will revert back to the lessor at the end of the lease term. Kaya yan, naging yan, kasama sa lease payments natin. Again, this is 3,480,000 so, walang pagbabago niyan dito sa ating carrying value ng asset kasi ganun din kanina, 500,000 din ang purchase option, di ba? In the last problem. Again, this is your advance payments, less incentives, initial direct cost, and the present value of the restoration cost. Now, okay. Tanong, in depreciating this lease asset, ano ang gagamitin natin? Five years ba or six years? Five years ba or six years? Okay. 
Ano ba ang nasatisfy na requirement? May trans <coughs> transfer ownership ba? Wala. May purchase option ba? Wala. Anong nasatisfy? Pumasok ba ito sa 75% goal? The answer is yes. That is 5. That is 5 over 6. No? 5 over 6. So, ibig sabihin class, ang nasatisfy ng requirement dito is the 75% rule. 5 over 6 is around 80% siguro yan. Okay? So, ang nasatisfy niya yung number 3. Okay? So, anong sabi natin? Para mas madali, hindi mo nakakabisiduhin yung 1, 2, 3, 4. Is there a chance na lumipat ang this asset sa lessee? Wala. Wala class. Kasi ang nasatisfy na dito is na 75%. At walang sinasabi dito class na lilipat ang ownership sa lessee at the end of the list. Okay? So meaning, we will deposit the asset using the shorter between the lease term and the useful life, which is 5 years. So, sir, saan po yung 5 over 6 na sinasabi nyo kanina? Ito yan. Okay? 5 is this. Useful life, ito yung correction. Ha? Useful life, uh, Fernando, 6 years supposed to be ito. May nakikita dito, correction, 6 years. Yan yun. Okay, balik kita, balik ko sa concept na. Okay? Dito siya. Dito kasi, ang talagang, ang, ang talagang gagamitin natin dito class, yung 1, 2, 3, 4. 1 is transfer ownership. 2 is uh, two is purchase option, bargain purchase option, 3 is 75% rule, and 4 is the 90% rule. Kasi kung ito class, sasauluhin natin at aalamin natin dyan class kung saan siya magpo-fall para maging financially siya, ang worry ko class, baka makalimutan mo yung pagkasunod-sunod nito from board exam. Kasi class, sa dami na nang inaaral mo, papa sa ulo ko pa sa ito ng sunod-sunod, baka bumalibalik ka dito. Kaya training natin sa isang konsepto na lang na ano, may chance sa bang lumipat o wala. Pag may chance ang lumipat, dito ka. Okay? Pag walang chance ang lumipat, dito ka. Okay? So, sir, hindi po ba impossible naman that the list term will be greater? Yes, diyan. Yes, imposible yan. Nga lang, following the concept. Following the concept in the standards. No? Kaya niya nilagay. Pero imposible naman na mas malaki naman talaga ang lease term kesa sa useful life. Wala naman siguro maglilis ng ganun. Nga lang, following the concept cited in the standards, kaya din natin sinusulat. Kasi ganun tayo tatanungin pagdating sa theory. Okay? Pero tama yung observation ni Gian. Walang ganyan, no? Maglilist ka yung ano, yung useful life ubos na tapos nangungupahan ka pa din. Swerte naman ni lesser parang ganyan. Pero wala talaga noon. Okay? Nga lang, following the standards, kung paano siya sinabi, ganun din natin siya sasagot. Okay? So, let's go back to the problem. Dito tayo. Okay. Check natin class. Check natin. Nako, i-reveal ko na eh. Dapat hindi pa. Mamaya. Tago ko muna. Kunwari hindi mo nakita. Ano yung una kong tanong? Sabi mo, 5 years, no? 5 years. Yes. Okay, tama yon. 5 years. Next. Can you please compute the depreciation here? Magkano ang depreciation niya? Depreciation expense for 20X1 or 20A1. Then post your answer huh? in the chat box. Yan. Si Janel may pinose niya. Tignan natin iba. Gian, okay. So, kay Gian is 870. Mag-ingat ha. Ingat kayo. Bakit? Kasi may residual value na. 
Okay, di ba? Cost minus residual value. Di ba may residual value dito? Would that residual value be considered in the computation? Di ba? Kailan i-consider? Kaya plus, ano ha, pag medyo, pag, pag nanunod ka ng NBA ha, may payo ko sa inyo, lalo na sa mga kalalakihan dito na nanunood ng playoffs. Pag nanunood ka ng NBA, humawa ka ng isang concept map ha. Concept map lang, huwag kang mag-solve. Okay? Laging concept map lang ang hawakan mo. Kahit anong subject, kung gumawa ka ng ibang concept map in other problems. Tingnan mo, bago matapos ang laro sa NBA, kabisadong kabisado mo na yung concept map mo. Okay? So, ito yung class. O, yan o. No? Pag may residual value, ingat. No? Diyan ka kasi madadali niya. Okay? So, residual value will always be deducted kapag may chance ang lumipat, pag walang chance ang lumipat, guaranteed lang. Okay? So, balik tayo sa problem. Okay. So, dito class, your depreciation should be 770-901 or 902 because of the residual value. Okay? That is your carrying value na 3,583,607.76. Next proceed. Next item. Problem 4. Ito si problem 4 natin. In item number 4, ano yung nabago dito? In item number 4, the useful life is still 6 years, ha? 6 years. Kasi walang ma, walang ma, ano dito, walang masasatisfy na requirements kapag hindi ko ito pinalitan. Okay? So, game class. A, B, and C, pareho pa din. Letter D, 6 years pa rin. 6 years yan, class, ha? Letter E, the asset will revert back to the lessor and the amount That and and that an amount is estimated is estimated and guaranteed, ah, and guaranteed residual value, no? Oh, class, ah, ano ang sabi natin? Kailan pwede ng pumasok sa lease payments ang isang residual value? One kapag guaranteed. Pangalawa, this asset will be brought back to the lessor at the end of the lease term. So ibig sabihin, kung letter I na to magingat ka, because this is what an guaranteed residual value. Okay? The contract provides restoration cost and it is paid is 10%. Unang tanong, magkano ang carrying value ng liability? What is now the carrying value of your lease liability? Yan ang pinakasimpleng tanong natin ngayon. Okay? Bakit? Wala namang ibang papasok ngayon sa lease payments mo, no? Kundi what? fixed rental payments. Hindi pwedeng pumasok sino? Hindi pwedeng pumasok na si residual value kasi guaranteed siya. Okay? Yun din yun. Okay? Ito siya. Now, that is 3,169. Again, diretso tayo dito. Mabilis na yan. Okay? Ganun pa rin naman siya. Next, anong Anong denominator ang gagamitin ko for depreciating the asset? Five years or six years? Okay. Five years. Okay. Next. Yun bang residual value? Yes or no lang ang sagot. Ha? Yun bang residual value? Iko-consider ba sa computation ng depreciation expense? Yes or no? Yeah. The answer is yes or no. The answer is no. Bakit no? Kasi class, ang nasatisfy niya, yung third requirement, yung 75% rule, there is no chance that the lease asset will be transferred to the lessee at the end of the lease term. Kailan lang i-consider ang residual value kapag gano'n ang sinabi? Residual value can only be considered in that scenario if the present, if the Residual value is guaranteed. No? 
So, dito, unguaranteed daw siya. Okay? So, ang sagot dyan, ganun na lang ulit yung class. That is, yeah, that is just divided by 5 years. And this is your area. Okay, let's go to item 5. In item 5, medyo na bago class. Why? Kasi may pumasok na termination cost. Okay? And the termination cost can be exercised in the fourth year. Tingnan mo ha? A, B, and C remains the same. Letter D, bumalik sa 8 years. Letter E, they also agreed that by the end of the lease term, the ownership will be transferred to the lessee. The contract provides that Mobile Legend restoration cost. Nasa kontrata na i-re-restore sa that implicit rate is 10% again. Okay. And letter H, an amount of 500,000 represent payment and penalties for terminating the lease. And the lease term reflects, okay, the lease is exercising an option to terminate. O yan ha, meron siyang option to terminate the lease on the fourth year. Okay? The dismantling cost at the end of the fourth year is estimated to be at 150,000 pesos. O yan ha, ito yung dismantling cost. Ito yung decommissioning yan. And restoration, ayan, 150,000. Sabi ha, reflects the lessee exercising an option to terminate the lease on the fourth year. Okay. But before we do that, Wait a long, can we go back to lease liability, problem number three, may present value, GRB4, di ba? Punta tayo dito, problem. Ito yan, GRB. Ito ba yan? Meron, kasi ano siya? Okay na, okay na dahil. Sa problem 4, ang guaranteed kaya hindi pumasok. In problem number 5 class, sige, paliwanag na lang. Kapag class, sinabi na the lessee, okay, reflex, o kaya exercisable ang termination ng lease. Kasi mula pa lang class, okay? Pag kinumpute mo na to, huwag ka nang gagamit class ng 5 years. Okay, ang gagamitin mo na dyan class is 4 years. Ano ang nagsasabi? Ito yung ano? Sa number 5. Ano ang sabi? And the lease term reflects the lessee exercising an option to terminate the lease at the end of the fourth year. Option to class, ha? To terminate the lease. And there is what? A high probability or probable that the lessee will terminate the lease. Dito pa lang class, ang ginagamit mo na dyan is what? Four years na. Okay? So this is four years class, no? hindi na yan 5 years na nagko-compute ka ng present value factor. This is also what? 4 years na rin. 500,000 times the present value factor at 10% 4 years. And this is your initial measurement of your liability. Okay? So, pag numeretso ka dito, class, mag-iingat ka na naman. Why? Dito, okay ka na. Dito, okay ka na. Dito, okay ka na. Dito, class, no? sa present value ng decommissioning and restoration cost. That decommissioning and restoration cost class, pinag-uusapan natin dyan, 5 years, 200,000. Nga lang, class, pansinin mo, iti-terminate ka ng 4th year. And the dismantling cost in year number 4 is na 200,000. That is what? 150. Ibig sabihin, class, ang gagamitin mo dito is the present value of 150,000 kailan on the fourth year. Hindi siya five years. Okay? So, ginagamit yan kapag, class, mayroong option to terminate and the option to terminate is highly probable talagang i-exercise ni less. So that is 150,000 times the present value factor of 1, 10%, and 4, that is 102, and this is your area. Okay, 3,680,810.45. Okay. Next, dito tayo magkakatalo ngayon. 
ano ang denominator natin sa pagcompute ng denominator ano sa pagcompute ng depreciation ano ang denominator na gagamitin natin sige hula okay ano ang denominator na gagamitin natin dito is it 5 years is it 8 years okay. is it 4 years Okay, class. If there is an option to terminate the lease, and that is highly probable that the lessee will exercise that option, you will just depreciate the asset using the four-year period. Why? Kasi, class, yung lease liability mo, di ba? Apat na taon lang din naman. Okay? So, dito, class, sa pag-depreciate na asset, you will use what? The lease term. And the lease term is what? Not actually five years. In consideration of the option to terminate, talagang obvious yan ay eh, nilis mo lang yan ni Lessie ng apat na taon lamang. Okay? So, the depreciation to be used, the, the number of years to be used is just four years. Okay? Itong last wala pa, hindi pa ito lumalabas sa board exam. Kung lumalabas sa board exam na nakikita natin after the implementation of these new standards is yung number one, number two, number three, and number four. In anticipation for your next board exam, na baka makita na itong problem na tulad nito, tandaan mo class, yan. Okay? Ganyan lang naman yung mga tanong dyan sa less C finance test. What you need is the concept map and practice this problem and come up with uh, a time, no? a regular time to <coughs> effective time para mapag-aralan mo ito. Okay, so these are the answers in problem number. So in the new standards class, hindi naman talaga nawala sa operating list. Meron namang pinag-uusapan na operating list. Nga lang class, kailan gagamitin ang operating list? Concept map class. Nawala. Ay, ito pa. Iniwala ito pa. Okay. Operating list, no? Operating list class, one. Kapag short term ang list, operating yan. Kapag low value ang lease, operating din yan. O it is almost equivalent of saying na nawala namang na-meet na indicator ng finances. Okay? That is operating lease. Kapag operating lease ang ginamit, that is the typical bayad ka as a lessee, rent expense mo. Kinuha ni landlady, rent income niya yan. Parang ganyan. Ito class yung mga considerations. One, Rental payments, no? Rental payments that is considered as rental expense on the part of the lessee and rental income on the part of the lessor. Next, lease bonus. Lease bonus, pa paano ba nagkakaroon ng bonus ng lease bonus? Kasi class that is prepaid rent on the part of the lessee that is an earned income on the part of the lessor. Ganito yan class. Kapag lease bonus class, parang binibigyan mo ng advance payment itong si lessor para i-grant sa'yo ang, ang pagkakataon na ibigay sa'yo ang property para upahan mo. Example, sa isang lease property, lima kayong interesado. Lima kayong interesado. Paano ka magkakaroon ng advantage over the other interested lessees para mag-run sa'yo yung right to lease the asset. Okay? Magbigay ka ng lease bonus. Okay? So meaning, ang lease bonus nang gagaling niyan kay lessee. Pag oh, bigyan kita ng 50,000 as a lease bonus, but that is equivalent to what? Prepaid rent. Okay? Prepaid rent on the part of the lessee and, and an earned income on the part of the lessee. What is the subsequent treatment for that? This prepaid rent should be amortized as rental expenses over the lease term. And this earned income should be amortized as rental income over the lease term. Okay? Next, you have your advanced rental payments. Advanced rental payments, again, that is a prepaid rent on the part of the lessee and an earned rent income on the part of the lessor. Ano ang pagkakaiba ng lease bonus, advance rental? Ito class, dun sa subsequent measurement na to. Ito kasi part talaga yan ng IPA. Okay? Prepaid rent that should be treated as what? Rental expense when incurred. 
rental expense when incurred, and rental expense when earned. Ito yung one month advance, two months deposit. Yung advance, pag nagamit mo na yan, that is expense. Ito naman is rental income on the part of the lessor. Next, ito class, tandaan mo tong letter D. This is one of the common items given in the board exam. Security deposit. This security deposit, okay, the purpose of which is to compensate the damages done to the property. One month advance, two months deposits. The two months deposits, that is what? That is intended to compensate for the damages done to the property at the end of the lease term. Okay, ano yun? Halimbawa, sinira mo yung grapo o di ipapaayos, charge yan sa security deposit. May unpaid bills ka. Okay? To charge yan sa security deposit. Okay, yun ang purpose ng security deposit. Nga lang na sa Pilipinas, mayroong ugaling ganito. Di ba, manang, nung nagbayad ako nung una, meron akong two months deposits. Dumating yung pagkakataon class na ganito na yung nangyari. Dalawang buwan na lang, okay? Ma-expire na yung, yung lease term. Anong sasabihin mo? Sa Pilipinas, ganito ang sinasabi. Di ba manang natatandaan mo nung una nagbayad ako sa iyo ng two months deposits? Yung two months deposits ko na yun manang, ano, pwede bang ganito na lang? I-convert ko na lang? No? Hindi na ako magbabayad sa remaining two months ng rentals. Yun na lang ay ipapambayad ko. Pag class, ganun na nangyari, Ibang usapan na yun. Because that security deposits was converted into what? Advanced rental payments. No? Ganun siya. Pag security deposit class, to compensate for the damages done to the property, and that security deposit, ibabalik yan sa lessee. No? Ibabalik yan sa'yo. As lessee. Kaya receivable mo yan. And this should be initially measured at present value. Okay? And payable naman yan ni lessor. What if the problem is silent? Nakalagay lang security deposit. If the problem is silent, security deposit is actually intended to compensate for the damages done to the property and that security deposit will be returned no? to the lessee at the end of the list. Okay? Next, initial direct cost. Initial direct cost is a capitalizable cost on the part of the asset. No? Okay, lessor yan. And that should be amortized. That initial direct cost should be amortized as expense, as expense over the lease term. Okay? Capitalizable cost and amortized as expense over the lease term. Contingent rent, contingent rent that is an additional rental on the part of the lessee, an additional rental income on the part of the lessee. Okay? Depreciation, simply si lessor yan. Okay? Executory cost. That is those these two items are considered as expenses. Okay? Ano pa ba dito? Paano kapag meron non-uniformity of rental payments? Okay? Pag meron non-uniformity of rental payments, your step number one is to compute for the annual lease rentals. These annual lease rentals will become your lease. Okay? Lease receivable, lease payable. Annual rent expense, annual rental income. Okay? Depende kung saan ka tumitingin. Pag kay lessee, yan yung lease payable mo. Yan yung annual lease rent expense mo. Okay. Sa lesser naman, yan yung lease receivable mo. At yan yung annual lease rent income mo. Okay? Pag merong non-uniformity ang rental payments, ang unang gagawin is to compute first for the uniform annual lease rental payments or receivables or expense for income. Paano makompute yan? Total lease payments divided by the lease term, makokompute mo yan. Okay? Sa problem natin class, mas malinaw yan. Let's now go to the problem. Okay. Nilipat ko na siya dito para madali. Okay. Ano ba ito? Yes, so operating lease type. Okay, class. Ito yan. Operating lease na Tingnan mo lang. Nandun yan sa handout ninyo. Baka iba lang yung number. Pero just listen. This is the actual information in the handouts. Okay? Let's now proceed. Sabi dito magkano ang rental income to be recognized by Kaubet? Ang Kaubet should be the lesson. Okay? Ingat ka dyan, class. Ha? Sa board exam, minsan nagkakabaligtad dyan. Hindi kinoconsider na bonus. 
Pag annual rental income, siyempre, kailangan si lessor yan. Okay? Annual rent expense, siyempre, si lessor yan. And the carrying amount of the security deposit, December 31, mamaya natin pag-usapan. Okay, let's proceed. Ano ang papasok dito na rental, rental income on the part of the lessor? Isa-isahin natin. One, annual rent. Annual rent is considered as rent expense on the part of the lessee and rent income on the part of the lessor. So, manggagaling dyan ang rental income. Isa. Lease bonus. Initial treatment for that, that is a prepaid rent on the part of the lessee and that is an unearned income on the part of the lessor. However, this should be subsequently amortized over the lease term. Subsequently amortized as part of the rental expense on the part of the lessee and subsequently amortized as part of the rental income on the part of the lessor. Okay? So, dalawa na yung panggagalingan. Next. Security deposit of 60,000. Tingnan mo muna. Okay? Is that security deposit converted into rental payments? Alamin natin. The first payment of the rentals, okay, December 31, the security deposit will will be will be returned to Crabbit at the end of the list. The appropriate discount rate is 10%. So plus, this security deposit of 60,000 is actually intended to compensate for the damages done to the property and will be returned to Robert or to the lessee at the end of the list. And the discount rate here is 10%. Okay? So, ano ang panggagalingan ng rental income? One, panggagalingan ng rental income, syempre yung rental payments na 400,000. Okay? 400,000. Ano pa class? Ito, lease bonus, 80,000. Would that 80,000, full 80,000 be included as part of the rental income? Yes or no? So first year class, would that 80,000 be included in full in computation, in computing for the rental income? The answer is no. This should be amortized over the lease term uh, of five years. So amortized as part of rental income that is 80,000 divided by five years and that is your lease bonus. Okay? Yun bang security deposit, panggagalingan ba yan ng rental income? The answer is no. Okay? So, the answer for number one, or in this item one, magkano annual rent income to be recognized by the lessor is 416,000. Next na tanong class. Magkano, okay, magkano class ang rental expense to be recognized by the lessee? Magkano ang rental expense to be recognized by the lessee? And hint then plus, whatever be the rental income recognized by the lessor as a counterpart and the part of the lessee, that should be treated as rental expense. So what is now the total rental expense to be recognized or to be, to be recognized by the lessee? Okay? In 20x1. Kahit may sagot mo ka lang sa chat box. <clears throat> Ulitin ko ka lang sa whatever be the rental income recognized by the lessor as a counterpart that should be the rental expense to be recognized by the lessee. So the answer for this is also 416,000 pesos. Okay? And this security deposit of 60,000 is considered as is considered ay diyan, no? Sir, hindi naman po ba always if may initial, hindi. Pag initial direct cost kasi diyan, that is, hindi kasi, hindi ka papayag na ikaw yung magbayad nun kung ikaw si Lessie. Okay? Kung ikaw si Lessie. Ang nagbabayad talaga ng initial direct cost, si Lessor. Kasi, mangungupahan ka lang eh. What if, what if, eh, ikaw naman eh, Sinolder mo initial direct cost. Pag sinolder mo yan, G yan, that, that will become part of your prepaid yan. Okay? Ganyan. Tuloy natin. SD, security deposit. If, if merong security deposit, ano sabi natin, that will become part, 
the receivable. Receivable yan ni Lessie. And that should be measured at present value. Okay? So, ito yan, guys. So, present value. The present value of that is 37,255.26. Okay? Paano nakuha yan? Paano na kuha yan? Kinuha mo yung present value of Hancor of 1 at 10% discount rate, 5 years. Ito yan. And that is the initial measurement. Ang tinatanong pala dito, class, December 31. So, class, magkakaroon niya ng interest amounting to 10%. So, that is 37,255. Dagdagan mo lang yan ng 10% na interest, magiging 40,980.79. At the end of the fifth year, babalik yan dito sa 60,000. Kaya yan yung ibabalik sa iyo. Okay? So this 60,000 security deposit that is a receivable on the part of the lessee and payable on the part of the lessor, the initial measurement is at present value and this should be, again, okay, subsequently measured that its amortized cost, balik yan dyan sa 60,000 after 5 years. Madadagdagan lang ng 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, 10%, balik sa 60 yan. Sa 20X1, ang babalik pa lang dyan is 10%. So that is 37,255.26 times 110%, 40,980.79. Ayan. Yan ang sagot sa pangatlong tanong. Okay? Let's now go to the next one. The next item, there is what? A non-uniformity of lease payments. Ito yung class. Oh. Kung mapapansin mo class, hindi siya uniform eh. Kasi ang payment ng rentals for the first year is 400,000, 480 in the second year, and 520 in the third year. Ito class yung sinasabi ko kanina. If there is a non-uniformity of rental payments, your step number one should be to compute the annual rental payments. And the annual rental payments is what? That should be the uniform rental payments to be recognized annually. Paano mag-compute ng class? You will compute for the total rental payments over the lease term. Paano yun? Tingnan, mo ako. Tingnan natin muna. Baka meron pang ibang consideration. Bullet number one says, as an inducement to enter the lease, become it granted flagbed the first six months at least rent-free. Okay? Plus kanina, pinag-usapan natin ng lease bonus. Ang lease bonus class, binibigayan ng lessee kay lessor para i-grant sa kanya yung pagkakataon na mangupahan sa property. Ito naman class, lease rent-free, ang nagbibigay nito class, si lessor. Bakit binibigay ni lessor ang lease rent-free? Kanina class, unang example natin, sobrang dami ng lessee na gustong mangupahan. Kaya kailangan ng lease bonus para mag-grant ang property or pagkakataong mag-lease sa property sa isang lessee. Dito naman class, bakit nagbibigay ng lease rent-free? Ito class yung example ng tinatawag na El Nino. Anong El Nino? Halimbawa, may gusto ang paupahang property na? Naglagay ka na ng paskil kung saan-saan na for lease yung property na yan. Limang taon na class, limang taon na, no? Wala pa rin bumibisita sa property na yan para merong gustong mangupahan. O ganun. Kasi tagtuyot, limang taon na kapaskil, wala man lang sumilip. Isang araw nagulat ka. Okay, si Mr. C. Okay, nagtanong, pwede bang makita yung yung property na gusto niyong paupahan. After five years plus, may isang taong nanindigan na gustong tumingin ng property. Okay? So, nagulat ka. So, pinakita mo sa kanya ngayon. Halimbawa, building yan. Okay? Na gusto mong ipaupa. Pinakita mo. At ano sabi ni Ms. Percy? Oh, sige, thank you. Ano? Uh, babalik na lang ako pag-iisipan ko. Okay? Sabi sa ni Ms. Percy, ikaw si Lesson. Ano ang gagawin mo? Biliin mo limang taon na. Okay? Walang tumitingin. Kauna-unahan pa lang si Ms. Percy para hindi na siya makawala. Okay? Ano ang gagawin? Ganito na lang, Ms. Percy. Upahan mo na. Okay? Pero ganito, para hindi ka na makaatras. Yung unang anim na buwan, Ms. Percy, libre na yon. 
Okay? Hindi ka magbabayad ng upa. Ang gusto mo lang, class, matali mo si Mr. C. Na siya na yung mga upahan. Kasi pag pinakawalan mo pa si Mr. C, baka umabot na naman ng limang taon bago may sumunod. At makita mo si Mr. D. Hindi, ganun. Oh, so, anong sabi mo? Oh, Mr. C, okay na. Unang ano na buwan, hindi ka na magbabayad ng upa. Okay? Pumirma ka lang sa kontrata natin na ikaw na magiging lessee for a certain number of years. In this example, three years. Oh, yan. That is the lease rent. Okay? So, bullet number two is additional rent. Ano yan? Contingent rent class. Sabi natin, contingent rent that will become part as additional expense, rental expense on the part of the lessee, and rental income on the part of the lessor. Okay? Ano ang condition? Contingent kasi, nakadepende siya sa condition. Ang condition is daw, ganito. If sumobra ang sales ni lessee sa apat na million. Okay? If sumobra sa apat na milyon ang sales ni Messi, yung excess, subject yan sa contingent rent. Siguro ang pinapaupahan dito class ay pwesto sa palengke. Okay? So, the excess times 10%, that will become an additional rental expense on the part of the Messi and rental income on the part of the lessor. These are the sales. X1, 1.8, X2, 4 million, and X3, 6 million. Tumaas o lumampas sa threshold na 4 million, kailan lang? 20x lang. Ibig sabihin, dyan lang magbabayad ng contingent rental expense. No? Rental expense less. Only in 20x3. Let's now go to the requirements. Magkano ang rent receivable on December 31, 20x1? Ganito yan, class. Hindi ka makakapag-compute ng rent receivable ka agad. Bakit? Kasi kailangan mo muna makompute ito. Yung annual rental payments. Pwede mo rin tawagin annual rental uh, receivable. Okay? Annual rental expense or uh, annual rental income. Depende nga kung kaninong party ka tumitin. To compute for that, you must need the total rental payments. Actual. Okay? Total rental payments. What is the actual rental payments? Pansinin mo, this 400,000 in 20x1 is not anymore 400,000. Why? The actual rental payments na ibabayad sa'yo dyan ni Mr. C, hindi 400,000 because you've granted a uh, six months lease rent free. If this is for one year, so kalahati niyan plus that is 200,000. For 20x2, that is 480. For 20x3, that is 520,000. So the total, the total, the actual total rental payments is 1.2 million pesos. Okay? So 1.2 million pesos divided by the lease term of 3 years, okay, makukompute mo na kung magkano yung annual rental natin dyan. The annual rental for that is 400,000 pesos. And that is your step number one whenever that there is a non-uniformity of cash flow or rental payments. So, bakit po ulit 200,000? Dahil po ba sa 3-6 months? Yes, dear. Dahil yan sa 6 months lease rent. The annual kasi, the annual rental is 400,000. So, lease rent free ang 6 months for 20x1. So, yan. Kalahati na lang ang matatanggap mo talaga dyan. Okay? So, yes, GM. Kapag merong, uh, okay. so, tuloy natin. So, eto na yon. So, yan na yon. Kapag tinanong ka magkano ang annual rental income, ang sagot mo, 400,000. Pag tinanong ka magkano ang annual rental expense, ang sagot mo, 400,000. Pag tinanong ka magkano annual rent receivable, 400,000. Ganon din ang rent payable. Kaya pag tinatanong ka dito magkano ang rent receivable, December 31, 20x1, okay? Ang beginning rent receivable mo dyan is what? For, uh, uh, beginning. Beginning natin is 400,000. Ito, beginning natin. Okay? 
Tapos, magkano ang collection mo? Ang collection mo, ito lang. Yan lang makukollecta mo, 200,000 mo. Ibig sabihin plus, ang rent receivable mo ng 20x1 ay 200,000 din. So, this is 400,000 beginning. Rent receivable minus the collection of 200,000. The rent receivable in 20x1 is 200,000. Yan, 400 minus 200,000. Okay? Diretso natin. Paano, sir, kapag 20x2? Ito naman on the part of the lessee, no? lessee, rent payable. So, kung rent payable 20x2, okay? Ibig sabihin, ang rent payable ni lessee sa dalawang taon, okay, dalawang taon, that is 400 times 2, your beginning should be 800,000. Okay? Pero magkano na ba yung nabayad ni lessee? Ang nabayad ni lessee class ay 680,000 na. Saan ang galing ito yan? 680,000 na. Yan yung class. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, ang ending balance ng rent payable mo ng 20x2 ay 120,000. Hindi mo ito magagawa class kung hindi ka nagsimula sa step number one natin na computation ng annual rentals. Okay? So, ganun siya tatakbo. Okay? Requirement number three, can you please compute now what is the total rent expense in 20XT? After doing so, please post your answers in the chat box. Magkano raw ang rental expense, rental expense ng 20XT? So, una, ito muna class. Magkano ang annual rental expenses? O, magkano ang annual rental expenses? Sige. 400,000. Ang tanong ngayon, magkano ang total rent expense ng 20x3? Total rent expense ng 20x3. Ingat ka dyan ha. Kasi merong contingent rent na pinag-usapan dyan kanina. Nabasa ko yun, di ba? Yan. May contingent rent na? May contingent rent na 10% in excess of 4 million sales, di ba? Oh, yun. Magkano ba yun? 20x3, 6 million. Sumobra ng 2 million. 2 million times 10%, 200,000. 200,000 plus the annual rental expenses of 400,000. The answer in 20x3 now is 600 ba? 800,000. 400,000 plus 200,000. Sagot, 600,000. Okay? Annual rent expense, 400,000 plus the contingent rent of 200,000. Ang sagot natin class ay 600,000. Okay, last problem tayo sa operating list. Nga lang class, ingat ka dito ha? kasi ito yung paboritong problem sa operating list. Okay, basahin natin yung problem. Sabi dyan class, magkano ang rental income net of lease related expense? So magkano na lang yung naiwan? No? Rental income net of lease related expenses. Sabi dyan, January 1, X1, no bid purchase equipment for 4 million. The equipment shall be leased under operating lease. The estimated life is 10 years, estimated useful life is 10 years, and the estimated residual value is 480,000. On July 1, X1, the equipment was leased okay, by Harbet under 5-year operating lease. The annual rent is 800,000. The first annual rent was made on that date. Okay, initial direct cost incurred in uh, on negotiating negotiating the lease amounted to eighty thousand pesos. Insurance costs and that is an executory cost. Okay, not reimbursable amounted to four thousand pesos. Magkano ang rental income net of lease related expense? Obvious, Jan class. Obvious dyan yung rentals natin, di ba? Rentals, rental income yan. Nga lang, magkano ba? Ang rental income niya for 20x1 is not 800,000 because si Harbet dumating lang ng July 1. So, ibig sabihin, ang rental na matatanggap niya for 
from July 1 to July 1 to December is only 400,000 pesos. And that is the rental income. Net of net of least related expense. Ano ano ba yung mga obvious na least related expense dito? One is the executory cost na magkano na 4,000 pesos. Okay? Bawas natin. Ano pa? Okay? Yung depreciation. Okay. Ito na, ito na class. Ang depreciation class, depreciation expense, is considered as a least related expense. Kung ang property mo is intended for operating lease. Okay. Tanong. Kung ang depreciation ay least related expense, okay? Magkanong depreciation ang ikaw consider kong least related expense in 20x1? Yun ba ay... Ito kasi yung scenario, no? January 1, bumili ka ng asset intended for operating lease. Lagyan natin ng scenario. Scenario 1. Okay? Scenario 1, bumili ng asset January 1. Pagdating ng 7-1, pagdating ng 7-1, may nangupahan. Dumating si Harbet. Okay? Harbet. Yan. That is the first scenario. The second scenario is this. Second scenario. Bumili ka ng asset intended for operating lease January 1. Okay? Pagdating ng July 1, July 1, walang nangupahan. Ibig sabihin class, pagdating ng December 31, walang, walang nangupahan. All throughout the year in 20X1, walang nangupahan. Okay? Ang tanong dito class, ang tanong dito class, magkano ang least related expense related to depreciation in 20X1? Ulitin ko lang sa Ulitin ko. Scenario number one. Bumili ng asset January 1. Intended for operating lease. July 1, dumating si Harbet para mangupahan. Dumating, may lessee. Okay, na dumating. Ang tanong, magkano ang depreciation? What, what is the least related expense related to depreciation should be recognized in December 20X1? That is for item 1. For item 2, scenario 2, bumili ng asset intended for operating lease, all throughout the year, walang nangupahan. Ang tanong dito, the same. Magkano ang least related expense related to depreciation in 20X1? Okay, punta muna ako sa scenario 1. Magkano kaya ang least related expense related to depreciation in 20X1 for scenario number one. Sagot lang wala. Sagot lang. The asset is 4 million. Ha? 10 years, the residual value is for 80,000. Straight line method plus ang um, depreciation method. What do you think is the least related expense related to depreciation in 20X1? Okay? That is for the first scenario. Okay? Next. Wala pa akong sinasabi class ha, na tamang sagot. Nasa pangalawa na tayo. In the second scenario, what do you think is the least related expense related to depreciation? Okay? Scenario number two, what do you think is the least related expense related to depreciation in scenario number two? Okay? Okay. So, Tingnan natin. Balik tayo sa concept. Depreciation is always considered as a least related expense. Okay? If the property is intended for operating lease. Ulitin ko. Depreciation is always considered as a least related expense if the property is intended for operating lease. Okay. Babalik ako ngayon sa tanong. Okay? Wala pa akong sinabi kung tama o mali yung sagot ng mga nag-post. Okay? Pero gusto ko mag-post din yung iba, no? 
wala namang ano dito. Wala namang hindi pa to hindi pa to board exam class. Huwag kang matakot. Okay? Concept debt depreciation is always considered the re- least related expense if the property is intended for operating lease. Scenario number one. Okay? Yung mga nag-post kanina, pwede mag-post ulit. Ha? Okay? Kasi ito na ulit yan. What do you think is the least related expense related to depreciation in 20x1 on the first on the first scenario? Okay? Sige. Type your answers, please. Okay. Sige. Wala pa kasi nasabi din sagot. Okay. Punta tayo sa scenario number 2. Scenario number 2, ha? Magkano ang least related expense related to depreciation for scenario number 2? Scenario number 2 tayo. Ayan, class. Tatandaan mo lagi yan, ha? The least related expense, okay, on the part of the depreciation is not okay dependent kung meron nang upahan o wala nawa kapag walang nang upahan talo ka meron ka ng lease related expense na 352,000 why kasi yung asset mo nagde-depreciate nawa hindi naman yan nagde-depreciate ng anim na buwan lang kung may nang upahan dito hindi naman nagde-depreciate yan ng anim na buwan lang nag-depreciate yan class ng isang taon pa rin kay may nangupahan o walang nangupahan. Kaya ang least related expense mo dito ay 352,000. Ganon din naman na 352,000 in scenario number. Masandaan. Okay? So dito class, meron kang depreciation is a least related expense amounting to 352,000 pesos. Yan na ba lahat, class? Class, hindi pa. Bakit, class? Kasi merong tinatawag na initial direct cost. Ito, 80,000. Ang initial direct cost, class, sabi natin, ang treatment dyan, that is a capitalizable cost. That is an item added to the carrying value of the lease asset. Balik tayo, class, sa concept mo. Okay. Dito, class, sa concept map, nakalagay class ganito. Initial direct cost that is added to the carrying value of the asset. However, this should be subsequently amortized as expenses over the lease term. Okay? Amortized as expense, ha? Okay. Balik tayo dito ngayon. Ayan. Ayan. Noong January 1, Nung bumili ka ng asset, that is 4 million. Tama. Nung July 1, may nangupahan, ibig sabihin plus, nag-depreciate ang asset mo ng 6 na buwan. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the carrying value of the asset ng July 1. Okay? Since 352,000 for the full year, ang hinahanap ko lang is the carrying value of the asset ng July 1. So that is 3,800,000. 24,000. That is the carrying value of the asset ng July 1. Okay? Tanungin kita ngayon. Magkano sa tingin mo, okay, ang carrying value ng lease asset ng July 1? Magkano ang carrying value ng lease asset? O, oh, ng lease, lease asset na to, ah. Ng lease asset ng July 1. Okay. Magkano ang carrying value ng lease asset July 1, 20X1. <clears throat> Ingat ka, kasi dumating sino? Dumating kasi si Harbet. Nung dumating si Harbet, nagkaroon tayo ng negosasyon for the lease at nagkaroon ng initial direct cost. And initial direct cost is a capitalizable cost. Meaning, nung July 1 class, ang lease asset mo, carrying value, is not 3824. Dahil sa 80,000, yeah, dahil sa 80,000 na initial direct cost, ang lease asset mo, 3,904,000. Nakuha. Okay. Next, 
pupunta tayo ngayon ng December 31. Ang asset mo, nag-depreciate na naman ng panibagong 176. Kaya 352 ang total niya. Kaya nakuha mo itong 3,648,000. Okay? Pero class, wala pa akong tanong. Ang tanong ko ganito. Magkano, ito na, number 8 ako dito, magkano ang caring amount ng lease asset mo ng December 31, 20X mo? Magkano sa tingin mo ang caring value ng lease asset mo ng December 31, 20X1? Sagot, class. Yan. Class, ganito, no? This 80,000, the whole 80,000 is a capitalizable cost. Okay? As far as July 1 is concerned. Pero class, pag tumakbo na yung panahon, nauubos din yan, ibig sabihin, yung part na nauubos, nagiging expense, yung naiiwan class, yun ang kinakapitalize. So dito class, etong 80,000, hindi na yan 80,000 idadagdag mo dito. Kasi ito, intended dyan for limang taon. Okay? Kung limang taon class, equivalent 80,000 is for 5 years, naubos ang, naubos ang 0.5 years, okay? Magiging 4.5 na lang ito, okay? So, calcio. Hanapin ang calcio. So, 80,000, 80,000 divided by 5 years, no? 5 years class, no? 80,000 divided by 5 years, okay? 16,000 per year. Nga lang class, dumating ang initial direct cost ng July 1 lang. Ibig sabihin class, 0.5 lang yan, no? Times 1 and 1 half year. So, ibig sabihin, ang na-expense ay 8,000, 72,000 ngayon ang ikakapitalize mo. Okay? 72,000 ang ikakapitalize natin. Okay, 72,000. So, ang asset mo class is... 3,720,000 ng December 31, 20X1. Balik tayo dito. Okay? The amortization of the initial direct cost is treated as a lease-related expense. Kaya class, meron ka pa dito. Yan. Ano yan? That is the expense related to the amortization on the initial direct cost. And that is equivalent to 8,000. Yung binawas mo dyan, kaya naging 72. Okay? Kaya ang sagot mo dyan, class, the amount to be considered as a rental income net of these related expenses ay 36,000 pesos. Okay? Yan ang sagot natin. Yan. Okay. Let's proceed. Pag-usapan natin ang isa sa mga paborito mo. Ay, dito na lang tayo. Dito na muna tayo. Ano ba? 8.15, no? 8.15. Okay. Sige. Mag-employee benefits tayo. Okay? Sa employee benefits class, ang gusto kong pag-usapan is the long-term employee benefits. Okay? Long-term employee benefits. Yung short-term kasi, Madali yan, kaya na yan ilagay sa video. Na? So, tutukan natin ang employee long-term benefits class kasi ito naman talaga ang laging tinatanong sa exam. Okay. Bakit mahirap ang employee benefits? Kasi class gumagamit dito ng mga terminology na dito mo lang makikita. Example, present value of the defined benefit obligation. Okay. Ang present value of the defined benefit obligation, tinatawag din yan, dinatawag din yan, di ba? Projected benefit obligation. Okay? So, present value of the defined benefit obligation, gumagamit din ng terminology na fair value of plan assets, etc. Kaya sa tingin mo, mahirap. Pero class, padaliin natin siguro ito. Okay? So, there are four steps, no? Actually, five yun. Five steps in long-term employee benefits. No? Five steps na dapat mong malaman. Your step number one, kailangan marunong kang mag-compute 
ng present value ng defined benefit obligation. Present value ng defined benefit obligation. So, yan. What are now the components or factors to be considered in computing for the present value of the defined benefit obligation? Okay. One. Since obligation yan, the normal balance is a credit balance. Okay? So, beginning mo, that is a credit. Okay? Plus what? Plus the service cost. Plus, pag karinint mo to, dagdagan mo ng letter P. Eh? Okay? These are what? Current and past service cost. Okay? Lahat ng service cost is a component in computing for the present value of the defined benefit obligation. Anong lahat ng service cost? Service cost may be present when service cost may be past. No? Current and past service cost must be considered. Next, you have your interest cost. Interest cost is dependent on the beginning balance. Meaning, kapag walang beginning balance ang present value ng defined benefit obligation mo, wala kang interest cost. Okay? And you have your actuarial losses. Okay? Actuarial losses, nga lang klas, hindi na yan ganang ginagamit sa board exam, no? Why? Kasi masyado daw technical pag ginamit ang term na actuarial loss. Anong ginagamit nila? Items that increases the present value of the defined benefit obligation because of the actuarial assumptions. Okay? Amount that increases the present value of the defined benefit obligation because of actuarial assumptions. So, yan. Mas friendly yung paggamit nila. Since sabi niya increase ng present value ng defined benefit obligation, syempre, doon tayo sa normal balance niya. Idadagdag daw. Eh. So, nasa credit yan. Yun din plus si actuarial loss. Ano klase yung magpapabawas sa present value ng defined benefit obligation? Benefits paid and the actuarial gain. Actuarial gain, these are the amounts that decreases the present value of the defined benefit obligation because of actuarial assumptions. Para makuha mo magkano ang present value ng defined benefit obligation. Okay? Siguro ako last, magsimula tayo sa problem solving para ma magamay mo muna yung pag-compute nito. Plus yung mga nandito sa Excel, yung mga nandito sa Excel, nandun din yan sa handout mo. Okay? So, let's have this. Ayan. Ito yung tanong, ha? This number 7 plus is an actual board exam problem. Okay? Madali lang yan. Nagiging mahirap yan, plus, pag hindi mo alam kung paano gagamitin yung mga terminologies na yan. Plus, ang tinatanong lang naman dito, magkano ang present value ng defined benefit obligation. So, the present value of the defined benefit obligation, ito lang yun. Okay, you have your beginning. Beginning na 480,000. You have your service cost, current and past service cost. Nakalagay dyan, current service cost, i-consider natin. Okay, 120,000. Tanong, Meron ba akong i-consider dito na interest cost? Yes or no? Meron ba akong i-consider dito ng interest cost? Yes or no? Yun lang ang i-type mo sa Y or N na lang. Y or N. Okay. Sabi ko sa iyo class, interest cost is dependent on the beginning balance on the present value of the defined benefit obligation. Since may laman ang beginning mo, automatic meron kang interest cost. Okay? The interest cost is 10% of that. So, this is 48,000 pesos. Okay? Next. Okay, next. Meron bang actuarial losses? Ito plus, oh. Tingnan mo ito. Decrease in the present value of the defined benefit obligation during the year due to changes in actuarial assumptions. So, meaning plus, this are the amounts that decreases the present value of the defined benefit obligation. Hindi yan actuarial loss. This is an actuarial gain. Okay? Kasi pinapababa niya yung present value ng defined benefit obligation. So, wala. Walang actuarial loss. Walang benefits paid. Walang benefits paid. Ah, meron plus. Benefits paid of 
and the actuarial, actuarial gain of 40,000, meaning the ending balance of the present value of the defined benefit obligation is 408,000 pesos. Okay? Let's now go to item 8. Item 8 tayo. Ang tinatanong sa'yo dito, class, magkano ang current service cost? Okay? Current service cost. Okay? Can you please compute, class, magkano ang ating current service cost? Problem number 8, current service cost, magkano? Okay? Gamitin mo lang, class, yung P account ng present value na defined benefit obligation. Then, squeeze. Makuha natin kung magkano ang ating current service cost. Okay? Nga lang, class, may mali sa problem na ito. Why? Kasi dalawa na si yung present value ng defined benefit obligation. Uh, dalawang December 31. Okay? So, para malinaw, ang gamitin mo, class, yung 488. Okay? What if, yan, yan, class, hindi what if. The given class is December 31, present value of the defined benefit obligation is 488,000. Okay? Ignore the last line item. Can you please compute now magkano ang current service cost? Class, tingnan natin, no? So, beginning balance is 480,000. So, interest cost is 10% of the beginning balance. That is 48,000. Then, meron ba actuarial loss? Tingnan natin, class. Increase in the present value of the defined benefit obligation due to changes in actuarial assumptions this is an item that increases the obligation, meaning this is the actuarial loss. Okay? May benefits paid din daw na 200,000 plus. May benefits paid na 200,000. Wala namang actuarial gain na binigay kasi actuarial loss. Na. Okay, so squeeze natin yan. That is 488,000 plus 200,000 minus 480,000 minus 48 minus 40. Okay, so the answer is 120,000 pesos. Ulitin natin, 488 plus 200 minus 480 minus 88. That is 120,000 pesos. Okay, the answer is 120,000 pesos for the second problem. Okay, let's now proceed. Kasi hindi ganun kabilis mag-compute ng, ng service cost okay? or the present value of the defined benefit obligation pag pinasok na ang concept ng projected unit credit method. Projected unit credit method is a method that is being used or recommended by PAS-19 sa pag-compute ng retirement benefits. So this projected unit credit method uses what? a certain assumptions on the final salary or the future salary level of an employee that is due for retirement. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, class, ito lang ang method na gumagamit ng future salary or final salary level para mag-compute ng retirement benefits ng isang empleyado. Pansinin mo itong number, itong problem na to. 
Yung unang tanong class, ito yung ginagamit na terminology sa board exam. Mag-compute ka ng ultimate cost of the defined benefit plan. The ultimate cost of the defined benefit plan class, technical term yan, pero yan kasi ang ginagamit. Ang common sa atin, pag tinanong, yan yung class, yan yung lump sum benefits. Yan yung lump sum benefits na matatanggap ng isang empleyadong nagretiro. Or, this is how much of is the total amount of retirement benefits to be received by the employee. So, itong nakakulong na yan class, wala yan sa board exam. Hanggang dito lang siya, mag-compute ka ng ultimate cost of the defined benefit plan and that is what synonymous to lump sum benefits of the employee. Using the projected unit credit method, your step number one is to identify the final or the future salary level. O, basahin natin yung problem. The company agrees to provide lump sum retirement benefits to employees equal to 6% of the final salary for each year of service. For each year of service, meaning this is the service period. Huh? And the average annual salary okay, ng empleyadong ito ay 12 million pesos. 12 million annual salary niya. Plus kapag ganyan ang sweldo mo, 12 million pesos, huwag na huwag mong iisipin magretiro, no? Huwag muna, napakataas niyan, 1 million per month, okay yun. Tapos ang sabi pa, average annual salary increase starting January 1, 20x2 and every year thereafter, 3%. Huwag ka nga ang magretire. Bakit? Kasi mag increase po ng 3% per year. Okay. Next, average service lives before entitlement to retirement is five years. This is what? This is the service period. Okay? Service period yan, dyan manggagaling kung magkano ang retirement natin. Okay? Discount rate for the year is 10%. Okay? So, ganitong last. Objective number one, we must compute the future salary level. Okay? Kailan? In 20x5. So if the average annual salary today is 12 million and that will increase by 3% starting 20x2, magkano kaya ang annual or final or future annual salary level ng empleyadong ito pagdating ng 20x5? Can you please compute? Para mas madali class, that is 12 million, ilang beses ba mag increase Apat, kasi 20x2 ang simula eh. Di ba? 20x2, 20x3, 20x4, 20x5. So that is 12 million times 1.03 times 1.03 times 1.03 times 1.03. Okay? So ang final salary level ng empleyadong ito ay 13,506,106. After computing the final salary level, makukumpute mo na class kung magkano ang retirement benefits entitlement per year. Okay? Kasi sabi dito, the lump sum retirement benefits is equal to 6% of final salary for each year of service. Meaning, this is an annual, annual amount, no? annual amount. And 6% daw niyan, 6% ng final salary will be the retirement benefits entitlement per year which is only 810,336. Is this the lump sum benefits? The answer is no. Kasi meron siyang service period na limang taon. Okay? The service period is 5 years. So 810,000 times 5 years, this is the lump sum benefits or the ultimate cost of the defined benefit plan. 4,051,832. Okay? Yan yung lump sum benefits niyan, class. Yan yung sagot natin sa unang tanong, magkano ang ultimate cost of the defined benefit plan. Ulitin ko. For step number one, magkano ang future or final salary level? Times 6% given po yan. Okay? 6% of the final salary. This is your... Retirement benefits entitlement per year and the service period is 5 years so the lump sum benefits is 4,051,832. Let's proceed. Magkano ang current service cost? Oh, Diyan tayo magkakatalo. Kanina, 
Ang pag-compute lang ng current service cost mo ay T account lang kasi given lahat ng factors. Okay. Plus, ang current service cost, that is your retirement benefits entitlement per year times the present value factor. Ganito yan, class. Your retirement benefits entitlement per year is 810,366. This is the service period. Okay? Per year is 810. Okay? Yan yan, class. Okay? Ngayon, ang pinag-uusapan natin ay current service cost. Okay? Current service cost. So, ibig sabihin, class, ang pinag-uusapan natin is ngayon. Okay, ngayon na, no? ngayon. Meaning, kailangan natin mahanap kung magkano ang present value ng 810,366 ngayon. Okay. Nga lang, class, yung 810,000 na yan, matatanggap mo ba kailan? 20x5, di ba? 20x5. So, kung bibilangin mo, kung ganong mo katagal matatanggap yung 810,366 hanggang 20x5, bibilang ka ng isa, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay? Kaya ang N nito is 4. Okay? Kasi this 310,810, 366, mahukuha mo yan in 20x5. Okay? In 20x5. So, From 20x1 to 20x5, apat na taon yan. This is 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay? So, N is 4. Kung gusto mong malinawan, dito tayo sa 20x5. Magkano ang present value ng 810,366 in 20x5? That is also 810,366. So, ang present value niyan, that is 1. Kaya pag binultiply mo yan, yan na yun. Okay? 810,000 times 1, yan na yun. Kasi yan yung present value niya in 20x5 talaga. etong 810,000 natin ng 20x1, hindi yan yung present value niya. Kasi yan yung future value niya pagdating ng 20x5. Kaya hinahanap mo ngayon kung magkano ang present value nito. So, ang ginagamit mo, na N is 4 kasi from here to here, 4 years yan. Okay? So, to compute now for the current service cost, ganun class, 810,000 retirement benefits entitlement per year times the present value factor to compute for the current or the present service cost. Okay? Ito ngayon, yung present service cost mo or current service cost in 20x1. Sa 20x2, ganun din, no? Magkano kaya ang present value nito? This 810,000, matatanggap mo yan 20x5. So, bilang ka. 1, 2, 3. Okay? So, ito yung magiging sagot mo sa problem natin. The current service cost in 20x2 is 608,840 and these are the remaining current service cost. Okay? Now, sa board exam class, swerte natin kung ang tinatanong lang is current service cost. Kadalasan class, ang tinatanong dyan, pag gumagamit ng projected unit credit method, is the defined benefit obligation or the present value of the defined benefit obligation. Okay? Gawa ako ngayon ng T-account dito. Okay? Gawa ako ng T-account dyan. Now, let's proceed. Ako muna, class. Tapos, pakocomputein kita ng ilang items for this. Okay? Sabi natin, to compute for the present value of the defined benefit obligation, may beginning ka. In 20x1, wala naman tayong beginning. Nga lang, class, meron tayong tinatawag na service cost. Yan, o. Oh, 553,491. Okay? May interest cost ba? Class, wala. Kasi wala namang beginning balance. Okay? Meron bang actuarial gains and losses? Walang pinag-usapan sa problem class na actuarial gains and actual loss at wala rin pinag-usapan na benefits paid. Ibig sabihin class, ang ending balance ng present value ng defined benefit obligation ko ng 20x2, 20x1 
ay 553,491. Then, sa 20x ko kaya magkano? May beginning na ako dito, class. Ang beginning natin dyan ay, yun, 553,491. Meron ba akong service cost? Yes, may service cost ka for 20x2. Magkano yun? That is 608,840. Okay? Next, may interest cost ba? Yes, meron kang interest cost na 55,349. Meron bang benefits paid? Wala, wala rin namang accrual gains and loss. This is the ending balance of the present value of the defined benefit obligation in 20x2. Tanong, can you please compute now what is the present value of the defined benefit obligation in 20x3? Nagkano ang present value ng defined benefit obligation in 20x3? After doing so, please post your answers in the chat box. Now, let's proceed. Okay. So, in 20x3, that is, yan, 2,009,172. Ganon din naman class dito. In 20x5. Okay. Ganon, the same process. Okay. Ganito yan class. Ang concern ko lang class, sa board exam, baka bigyan ka ng 20 years. Pag binigyan ka ng 20 years at ang tanong, what is the present value of the defined benefit obligation in 2017, hindi ko sinasabing gumawa ka ng 17 na P-account. Ganito yan, class. To compute for the present value of the defined benefit obligation, what you will do is to use the cumulative, to use the cumulative present, to use the cumulative retirement benefits entitlement per year times the present value factor. Ganito, class. For 20x1, for 20x1, okay, your cumulative retirement benefits entitlement for 20x1 is 810,000, di ba? Times the present value factor, lumitaw dyan yung 553,491. O, oh, di ba? Ganun yun. In 20x2, huwag ka nang gagawa ng T-account kung ang hinahanap is, again, the present value of the defined benefit obligation. What you need is the cumulative retirement benefits entitlement period. This 1,620, that is 810 times 2. Ito yan, dalawa. 810,366 plus 810,366, that is the cumulative retirement benefits entitlement per year times the present value factor of 0.751315. Makukuha mo kulas ito. Yung 127680. Nakuha. Pagdating sa 20x3, ganun din. So sa 20x3 mo, you need the three year, no? itong tatlong taon. Cumulative amount niyan, tatlong taon is 2 million. Uh, 2 million... Mali ito. Mali yan. Mali yan. Okay? Computein na natin. So, the cumulative amount. Okay? The cumulative amount here is 2,431,000. 2,431,099 times what? The present value factor. And the present value factor here is punin ko lang class, ha? 0.82, so this is 2 million for yan, something times this factor, makukuha mo yun, yung 2 million 9,170. Okay? So in 20x4, ganun ulit, cumulative amount, and the cumulative amount for that is, tapusin na natin, that is... Uh, 810,000 times 
na? So, dagdagan ko na lang ito ng 810,000. Yan yung cumulative amount niya. Times the factor that is 0.9. So, pag minultiply ko yan, ang sagot dyan should be ayan. Okay? So, pareho. Ha? Huh? So, pag binigyan ka ng 17 years, no? Huwag kang gagawa na ng 17 TA. No? Kaya dito, class, papansinin mo, ang nakuha mo dito ang present value of the defined benefit obligation ay 4,051,831. Ano yan, class? The factor is 1, di ba? Okay? The factor is 1. Okay? 1 ang factor. And the cumulative amount is what? Di ba? 321, plus 810,000. Yan yun, di ba? For 051832 times 1. Okay? Yan na yun, class. Ano yan? Familiar ka ba dyan? Yes. Yan yung lump sum benefits mo. Tingnan mo, ha? Upget ko. So, yan yan, class. Oh. That is the lump sum benefits. Nasundan. So, ibig sabihin, class, pag tinanong ka ng last year, na present value ng defined benefit obligation mo, yan yung lump sum benefit that is actually the amount of retirement benefits that the employee will receive ng December 31, 20 expired. Ano yung tanong ni Jayon? Sir, bali po yung interest cost is yung amortization lang po. Yes, ng discount. Okay? Yan siya. Okay? Ganyan ang projected unit credit method. Okay, class? So, tinatanong magkano ang current service cost 20x2? The current service cost 20x2 is 608,840. And 20x2 present value the defined benefit obligation that is 1217680. Plus, pero hindi naging limited dito yung tanong natin. Okay. Balik kita sa concept map. No? Concept map. Sabi ko ko last, merong 5 steps yan. Last, nasa step number 1 pa lang tayo, ha? Nasa step 1 pa lang. Okay? Wala pa. Hindi pa tayo nakakalayo. Okay. Let's proceed. In number 10, oh, mabilis na ito class. Summary. In summary, ganito. How to compute the current service cost? Current service cost is retirement benefits entitlement per year times the present value factor. How to compute the present value of the defined benefit obligation. That is the cumulative amount of the retirement benefits entitlement per year times the present value factor. Okay? Yun yung summary ng pinag-usapan natin projected unit credit method. Kaya sigurado ko sa number 10, pwede na kitang tanongin. In number 10, sabi niya, the lump sum benefits of 40,000 payable on retirement for each year of service. Meaning, this 40,000 is what? The retirement benefits entitlement per year. Okay? Tapos, tinanong ka dito. If in year one, Mr. One has rendered one year service, how much the current service costs? Assuming the appropriate present value factor is 0.68. Can you please answer number 10? Magkano ang current service cost? Assuming the factor is 0.68. Sige lang, class. I-type mo lang. So, the answer is 27,300 something. No? That is just the retirement benefits entitlement per year times the present value factor. Let's now go to item 10.B. 10.B class. If in year 3, Mr. 1 has rendered cumulative three-year service, magkano ang present value ng defined benefit obligation at the end of year 3, assuming the appropriate present value factor, is 0.82 something. Can you please compute? Okay, class. So that is 99,170 plus, na? 
that is 40,000 times 3 years cumulative times the factor of 0.826426. Okay, let's proceed. Dito ko lang sa item 11, hindi ko ito matanggal eh kasi uh, lumabas na ito sa board exam. Pero mabilis lang, discuss ko lang na mabilis. Okay, in this item 11, tinatanong class magka, ano, what is the attribution period? The attribution period class is the service period. Ha? The service period or attribution period, pwedeng ang sagot dyan, range in age o kaya number of years. Okay? Pwedeng range in age, pwede ring number of years. Mabilis lang ito class, mga 30 seconds lang siguro. to one minute ito. Sabi class dito sa problem 11, the company's defined benefit plan provides lump sum retirement benefits of 8 million sa lahat ng empleyado. So, sa lahat ng empleyado, tatanggap ng 8 million. No? Okay? To all employees who are still employed at the age of 55, after 20 years of service or who are still employed at the age of 65 regardless of the length of service. So class in item A, given nga na 55 ka after, after 20 years of service, ibig sabihin class, nagsimula yan sa 35. No? At the age of 35 to 55, magpo-fall ka sa letter A. Okay? Sa letter B naman, 65 daw at the age of 65 regardless of their length of service. Lahat ng empleyadong pumasok, either of this A and B criteria, will receive 8 million pesos. Okay? Kaya pag tinanong ka dito kay Mr. Juan, na nahire siya at the age of 33, what is the attribution period? The attribution period is the service period entitled, okay? Entitled for retirement benefits. Hindi siya pwedeng magsimula at the age of 33. Why? Kasi wala siyang qualification dito. Okay? Wala eh. Kasi kung 33 plus 20, 20 years, magiging 53 lang. So, ibig sabihin, para magiging entitled siya sa retirement, anong edad? Tingnan mo ito, class. The range in age should be, for Mr. One, should be 35 to 55. No? So, the attribution period for Mr. One is 35 to 55 or equivalent to 20 years. And the, uh, the amount or the retirement benefits entitlement per year or attributed per year is 400,000 which is only 8 million divided by 20 that is 400,000. Next, Miss Jane was hired at the age of 45. What is the attribution period? Okay, Miss Jane will not be qualified under letter A kasi 45 na siya pumasok. 55, 10 years pa lang siya. Saan siya papasok? Sa letter B. So the attribution period for Miss Gain is 45 to 65, equivalent to 20 years of service, and that is also 400,000. 8 million divided by 20, 400,000. Next, si Mr. Lakai was hired at the age of 55. The attribution period should be what? Hindi pwede yung letter A, kasi 55 na nga siya pumasok. Pwede siya sa letter B, regardless of the length of service. So the attribution period of Mr. Lakai is 55 to 65 with 10 years, no? with 10 years na, na yeah, that is equivalent to 10 year service period, 55 to 65. And the retirement benefits entitlement per year for Mr. Lakai is 800,000 pesos. That is 8 million divided by 10, that is 800,000 pesos. Okay? Next, let's have the next problem. The next problem is your step number two. That is the fair value of land assets. Fair value of land assets. The fair value of land assets can be computed using this formula. No? These are the items that affects the fair value of land assets. Since this is an asset, the beginning balance is a debit balance plus the return on plan assets, return on plan assets, plus the contribution to the fund, contribution to the fund, minus benefits paid, and that is your ending balance. Beginning, return on plan assets, contribution to the fund, minus the benefits paid, and that is your ending balance. Let's now go to the next problem. Pinapa-compute lang naman dito class, what is the fair value of land assets? 
Fair value of plan assets, beginning is 480,000. Return on plan assets, which is equivalent to the actual return, okay? That is 10%, okay? 10% of 480,000, that is 48,000. Contribution to the fund is 800,000. And the benefits paid is 200,000. So the answer for this, fair value of plan assets at year end is 1,000,000. 128,000. That is number 12. Okay? Let's go to item 13. In item 13, tinapakompute ka ng net defined benefit liability, net defined benefit liability or asset as of January 1 and December 31. Then ito yan, please. The net defined benefit liability or net defined benefit asset can be computed by comparing Okay, the balances of fair present value of the defined benefit obligation and the fair value of land assets. Okay, sabi dyan, ganito, concept map tayo, para makita mo. Ito yung class, concept map number three. If the present value of the defined benefit obligation is greater than the fair value of land assets, meron kang tinatawag na net defined benefit liability. Okay, kapag mas mababa naman ang iyong asset at mas mataas ang iyong pas pag mas mataas naman ang iyong asset kaysa sa liability, meron kang tinatawag na net defined benefit asset. Okay? So dito class, sa problem natin problem natin Okay? Ang dalawa yung tanong eh, dalawa yung tanong. One, magkano yung asset net defined benefit liability or asset January 1? Plus, may kulang na info dito, no? Letter A, the fair value of plan asset should be January 1. This should be January 1, no? Ako na ang sasagot sa 13.1. In 13.1, the present, the net defined benefit liability or asset is how much? Alamin natin. Since January 1 yung tanong, at ang present value ng defined benefit obligation ng January 1 ay, ay 4.8, at ang fair value ng plan assets natin ng January 1 ay apat na milyon lang, ibig sabihin, mas mataas yung obligasyon. So, ang sagot natin dito, class, net defined benefit liability of 800,000 pesos. Na? Kasi mas mataas ang obligasyon kesa sa asset. And that is the answer in 13.1. Dito sa 13.2, class, hindi siya ganun kasimple. Why? Tinatanong niya magkano ang net defined liability okay, for asset ng December 31. Okay? Pag mas mataas ang asset, net defined asset as of December 31, net defined liability naman pag mas mataas ang obligasyon. So ano ang gagawin mo dito, class? Ang gagawin mo dyan, class, hanapin mo muna yung mga ending balances ng present value ng defined benefit obligation at yung present fair value ng plant assets. Okay? Unang tanong, can you please compute the ending balance, okay? Ending balance of the present value of the defined benefit obligation. Yun mo na yung tanong. How much the ending balance of the present value of the defined benefit obligation? December 31 po tayo ng 20x month. Okay, class. So, meron tayong beginning balance na 4.8 million. Meron kang current service cost na 1.2. Meron kang uh, interest cost na 10% na 10% of 4.8. Meron din daw benefits paid na 200,000. Walang actual gains and losses. So, that is 6.28 million. And the fair value of plan asset December 31, meron kang beginning na 4 na milyon. Then meron ka daw return on plan assets no? na 480,000. Tapos binigyan ka ng, ng 120,000 contribution to the fund. Tapos meron kang benefits paid na 200,000. So meron kang ending balance na magkano? 4 point? Tama ba yan? 4.4. Let's compute. 4 million plus 480 minus 120 minus 
Okay, 4, 480 plus 120 minus 200. So that is 4.4 na. So ibig sabihin class, anong mas malaki? Obligasyon. So meron kang net defined benefit liability amounting to 1,880,000. Yan class yung sagot natin. Net defined benefit liability of 1,880,000 pesos. Okay? Next, ito yung last item natin. Pero tatlong problems ito. Ito na yung pinakamahirap na. Baka tanungin ka ng defined benefit cost. Okay? Concept map tayo. Yan. So class, nasa na tayo? Nandito na tayo sa step 4. Kasi class, ang step 1, hanapin lang obligasyon, hanapin yung fair body ng plan asset. Step 2, pag compare, meron kang net defined benefit liability or assets. At yung pang apat, mag-compute ka na ng net defined benefit cost. Ang net defined benefit cost, there are three major factors. One, you have your service cost. Next, you have the net interest and the net defined benefit liability or assets. At meron kang remeasurement and the net defined benefit liability or assets. Ulitin ko lang. Service cost, net interest, and the net defined benefit liability or assets. Remeasurement and the net defined benefit liability or assets. Okay? Tatlo lang yan. Etong dalawa class, yung summation ng service cost at net interest and the net defined benefit liability or assets, tatama yan sa profit or loss. Tatama yan sa profit or loss. Yung remeasurement ng net defined benefit liability or assets, tatama yan sa other comprehensive income. Pag tinanong ka ng net defined benefit cost, pag samasamahin mo yung tatlo, Pag ang tanong sa'yo, net defined benefit cost that will affect profit or loss, yung dalawa lang. Pag ang tanong, what is the net defined benefit cost that affects the, that affects the other comprehensive income, ang sagot mo, itong pangatlo lang. Plus, hindi ganun kasimple ito. Why? Kasi class, bawat isang factor nito, merong tatlong sub-factors. Ito yan class. Ito na yan. Shambali ang kailangan mong malaman. These are the components of the defined benefit cost. These are the major items, service cost, net interest, and the net defined benefit liability or assets. The measurement on the net interest and the defined benefit liability or assets. At meron silang tig-tatatlong sub-components. Under service cost, one, you have your current service cost, past service cost, and the gain or loss on settlement. Gain or loss on settlement. Net defined benefit liability or asset, you have your interest income on planned assets. Next, you have your interest cost on the defined benefit obligation. And you have your interest on the effect of the asset ceiling. Interest on the effect of the asset ceiling. Remeasurement. One, you have your actuarial gains and losses. You have your return on planned assets versus interest income on planned assets. And you have the comparison between the changes in the effect of the asset ceiling versus interest on the effect of the asset ceiling. Okay? Shambali and class. Current pass, gain or loss, settlement, interest income, interest cost, interest on asset ceiling, actual gains and losses or losses, return on plan assets versus interest on plan assets, and change in the effect of the asset ceiling versus interest on the effect of the asset ceiling. Ceiling. It is the it is a requirement class for you to memorize these nine okay, items to be considered in computing for the defined benefit cost. Let's now go to the problem. Okay, so dito class, ang tinatanong, what is the defined benefit cost? Okay, isa-isahin natin, no? Isa-isahin natin. Service cost, ito siya. Net interest on the defined benefit liability or assets. And the measurement on the net, def net defined benefit liability or assets. Okay, pag-usapan natin to. Hanap ka kung may nakita kang service cost. Meron class. Okay? 
Letter C refers to past service costs. Letter D refers to past service costs also. Letter E refers to current service costs. So, ibig sabihin, plus your current service cost, that is 2.4 million in item E, and your past service cost, that is uh, 800,000 plus 1.2, that is 2 million pesos. Next, meron bang gain or loss on settlement? Yes, loss. Meron. Nasaan? Nandun sa letter G. The loss on settlement is 200,000. Okay? Yung nagkaklas, ha? Ang kinocomplete mo, plus cost. Okay? Cost. Okay? So, kapag loss ito, kapatid yan ng cost, dinadagdag yan. Pero kapag ang lumabas class ay gain on settlement, this should be deducted. Okay? Let's proceed. Interest income on plant assets. The interest income on plant asset is dependent on the beginning balance, is dependent on the beginning balance of your fair value ng plant assets. Okay? The beginning balance of the fair value ng plant asset ay 7.2 million. So the interest income on plan asset that is a certain percentage of the 7.2 and the discount rate is 10%. So that is 10% times 7.2 that is 720,000 pesos. Pero class, this is interest income. Huh? Ang kinocomplete mo cost, so this interest income, kalaban niya ng cost, ibig sabihin that should be deducted in computing for the defined benefit cost. Interest income kasi siya. Next, you have your interest cost on the defined benefit obligation. Interest income on the defined, interest cost, I mean, interest cost on the defined benefit obligation, pinag-usapan na natin yan kanina. The interest cost on the defined benefit obligation is dependent on the beginning balance of the present value of the defined benefit obligation. The beginning balance of the defined benefit obligation is 1.8 is is 8 million I mean times 10 percent so that is 800 thousand and this is your 800 thousand. Interest on the effect of the asset ceiling. Wala ho tayong asset ceiling sa problem na to kaya wala yun. Next, you have your actuarial gains or losses. The actuarial gains or losses meron bang binigay? Nasa letter H class actuarial gains. Again, ang kinocompute mo cost. So, ibig sabihin, this is a gain. So, this is kalaban ng cost that is deducted. Okay? Dito, class, maraming nagkakamali. May itatanong na ako sa'yo dito, class. The return on plan assets that is 480,000. Ito yun. 480,000 under letter I. And the interest income. <coughs> interest income on plan assets is 740,000. So the difference between the two is 240,000 pesos. Tanong, would that 240,000 be deducted or added in computing for the net defined benefit cost? Ang tanong ko, ganito, yan ba ay i-add or i-deduct sa pag-compute ng net defined benefit cost? This 240,000. Ano sa tingin mo? Added or deducted? Again, let's proceed. Para hindi ka malito ganito. <clears throat> the return on plan assets is considered as your actual, no? actual income. Okay? While the, while the interest income on plant assets is your expected income. Expected income. Okay? Ganyan yan. Actual income is 480,000. This is your ROPA. Return on plant assets. And this is your IPA or interest on plant assets. Okay, class? Your return on plant assets, that is your actual income. While your interest income on plant assets, that is your expected income. Okay? Ito na yun, class. <clears throat> Kung ang actual income mo ay 480,000 at ang expected income mo ay 720,000, sagutin mo lang ako ng ganito. Ano sa tingin mo? Masaya ka ba o malungkot? Masaya o malungkot? Yun ang sagot. 
Okay? Sad. Okay? Malungkot ka. Ano bang kinocompute mo? Cost. Okay? Pag cost ang kinocompute natin, ano bang emotion yan? Masaya ba o malungkot? Okay. Malungkot din. Ibig sabihin, class, itong 240,000, okay, na difference ng actual at expected income ay isang kalungkutan at ang kinukumpit mo ay isang kalungkutan din. Ibig sabihin, class, magkapatid yan. This 240,000 should be added. Nakuha? Okay. <clears throat> so, this is your uh, Asset ceiling, no? the change in the effect of the asset ceiling versus interest in the effect of the asset ceiling. Wala namang asset ceiling na binigay dito. Kaya yan na yun, class. Okay? So dito, class, this is your current service cost. Okay? And this is your net interest on the net defined benefit liability or assets. And this is your the measurement. So your, your net defined benefit your net defined benefit cost is yan, 4,840,000 pesos. That is 4.6 plus 80 plus 160,000 pesos. Tanong, ito ko na, chat box please. Magkano ang net defined benefit cost that will affect profit or loss? Magkano ang net defined benefit cost that will affect profit or loss? <clears throat> okay, class. The net defined benefit cost that, that will affect profit or loss is 4,680,000 pesos. Nasaan nyo? Ito. Your service cost and your net interest and the net defined benefit liability or assets. Next question. Magkano ang net defined benefit cost that will affect other comprehensive income? Ang sagot dyan, class, is 160,000 pesos. Okay. Let's now go to the next problem. So next problem natin, class, mayroong tinatawag na reimbursement right. Okay? You will only consider reimbursement right kapag mayroong kapag virtually certain ang isang reimbursement right. Okay? Reimbursement right, kinoconsider lang yan kapag virtually certain. Okay? Ang tanong lang dito, class, again, magkano ang net defined benefit cost? No? So, ipakita ko na lahat ng given dito. Ito lahat yun. Okay? You have your current service cost of 2.4 million. Nasaan yun? Nasa letter C. Walang pa service cost. May gain on settlement na 160,000. Nasaan yun? Nasa letter D. Since that is a gain, that is contra to cost. Okay? Interest income on plan asset, that is just 10%. This content is 10% of the beginning balance of the fair value plan assets. No? 500,000. 5 million times 10%, 500,000. And the interest cost? That is 10% of the beginning present value and defined benefit obligation. Walang interest in the effect of the asset ceiling. So this is 100,000. Okay, next. Dito ka ulit. Now, wag mo muna pansinin yung gain on the measurement. Gain on the imbursement. The measurement tayo, the actuarial loss. May actuarial loss down na 80,000. And this time, the return on plan asset is 600,000. Nasaan yun? Return, actual return on plan asset is 12%. No? 12% of the beginning balance is how much? 600,000. Okay? That is 12% of the fair value of plan assets na 5 million. That is 600,000. And the interest income on plan asset is 500,000. Your actual income is higher than your expectation. Ibig sabihin plus masaya ka dito. At ang kinukumpit mo, kalungkutan, kaya kontra siya, kaya dinededak mo. Okay? So, class, makikita mo dito, yan yung mga sub-computations. Okay? Now, the gain on reimbursement, okay? If that is virtually certain, that must be considered. Okay? 
and that is part of your net defined benefit cost and that is also part of your net defined benefit cost that affects profit or loss. Kaya dito siya, oh. Yan. This item affects also the profit or loss. Since this is a gain, that is a deduction since ang kinocompute mo, cost. Okay? So, ang sagot dito, class, ay ay nawala. Okay? So, computing natin. Computing natin ito. Ayan. Ang sagot dyan ay 2,200,000. Okay? Pero kung last pag tinanong ka, what is the net defined benefit cost that will affect profit or loss, you will also consider the gain or loss on the investment. Okay? Sir, how, how did we get the 600,000? Ito? That is, uh, in this country, times the beginning balance of the present value of the defined benefit obligation. Sa baba. Ah, ito yan. 12%, kasi the actual return is 12%. 12% of the beginning balance of your fair value plan assets. Okay? That is 12% times 5 million pesos. Okay? Ito class, interest income on plan assets, that is 10% of the beginning balance of the fair value of plan assets. Okay? So, ito. Isa lang yung tanong ko, no? Magkano ang net defined benefit cost that will affect profit or loss? Magkano ang net defined benefit cost that will affect profit or loss? Okay. Okay, class. That is 2,220,000 pesos. Okay? Let's proceed, class. Ito, class, yung isang problem na merong asset ceiling. Sir, saan po papasok yung negative 120? Negative 120 or negative 20? Ay, ito, ito, ito. Ito, Gian? Ito ba yun? Ah, yes, that will... Sa profit or loss. Ito galing niyan dito sa gain on reimbursement. Ito yan. Gain on letter F. Gain on change in fair value of reimbursement asset virtually certain. Okay? Yan yung 120,000. Ay, hindi. Pag tinanong ka, na this is a separate item. Pag tinanong ka ng service cost, ang sagot mo, 2,240. Pag tinanong ka ng net interest and the defined benefit liability or asset, ang sagot mo, uh, 100,000. Pag tinanong ka ng remeasurement, ang sagot mo, negative 20,000. Okay? Pero pag tinanong ka that will affect, that will affect uh, the profit or loss, okay? That will affect profit or loss, uh, isama mo siya. So meaning this is a separate item. Kaya sa nandito sa gitna, kasi para malam pag pinakumpute ka, ng uh, katama sa profit or loss, automatic nandyan lang siya sa tabi. Okay? Uh, so, dagdag na lang po. Yes, dagdag nyo na lang sa concept. That should be virtually certain. Ha? Pag hindi sinabing virtually certain, do not consider. Okay? Next, next tayo. Next tayo, this is just an example na merong asset ceiling. No? Asset ceiling. Kasi kanina, eh, dalawang previous problem, wala. Okay. So, game. So, ganun pa rin to class. Okay? Current service cost, nandyan pa rin yan, past service cost, 200,000, gain or loss, wala. Interest income on, on, on uh, plan assets, uh, that is, what is the discount rate? This is 10% times the beginning. 600,000 and 10% times the beginning of the obligation 5,500,000 actuarial gain actuarial gain given dapat ito actuarial gain nasaan ka 
Ito, decrease in the projected benefit obligation due to actuarial assumption. That is your actuarial gain. Return on plan assets versus interest income on plan assets. Your return on plan assets, uh -huh. nasaan lang? Binigay dapat si interest. Return on plan assets na 300,000. Mm -hmm. Can you please find the, uh, mag-compute na nga tayo. Okay. Return on plan assets. Nasaan? Kung wala, plus squeeze natin. No? Ito, binigay pala. Actual return on plan assets is 900,000 versus interest income on plan assets which is 600,000. The actual return is 900. The expected is 600. Masaya, kaya deducted. Okay. Mag-focus tayo dito ngayon sa asset ceiling. Yan. Ito kasi yung di pa natin napag-uusapan. Tsaka change in the effect of the asset ceiling. Okay. The interest on the effect of the asset ceiling, saan ang galing yan? Okay. Ang sabi niya, effect on the asset ceiling beginning is 300,000. Okay. So that is just 10% of this 300,000. Nakuha mo to. Okay. Okay, then change. Change in the effect of the asset ceiling. Change in the effect of the asset ceiling versus interest on the effect of the asset ceiling. Okay, let's proceed. The change in the effect of the asset ceiling, December 31, is uh, 500,000 pesos. Saan yun? Change in the effect of the asset ceiling that is uh, 800,000 versus 300,000. Okay? 800,000 versus 300,000 that is 500,000. Versus what? Versus interest on the effect of the asset ceiling na 30,000 pesos. Kaya mo nakuha yung 470,000. Change in the effect of the asset ceiling versus interest on the effect of the asset ceiling na 30,000 pesos and that is 470,000. So, ganun ulit yan, class. Pag tinanong ka, what is the, the, the net defined benefit cost that will affect profit or loss? etong dalawang ito. Nga lang, class, kaya ako ni-reveal yung problem na to. One, para sa interest on the effect of the asset ceiling at saka saan itong other term ng net defined benefit cost that will affect profit or loss. Okay? What is the employee benefit expense? That is just the net defined benefit cost that will affect profit or loss. Okay? So, magkano yun? That is ito. Okay? Magkano yan? That is 830,000 pesos. Tingnan mo sa ilalim ng screen. Itong summation, no? that is 830,000, pinagsama si service cost, saka yung net interest, the net defined benefit, liability or asset, that is 830,000, that is also the net defined benefit cost that will affect profit or risk. Okay? So, 330,000, the measurement po yun. Interest and the effect of the asset ceiling. This is the effect of the, on the asset ceiling, January, GM. That is 300,000 times the discount rate of 10%. Okay? Times the discount rate of 10%. Okay? So, meron pa ako yung isang problem na ilalagay ko sa yung change, yung change, no? yung change is 800 versus 300. Okay? 800 versus 300. So that is 500. That is the total change. Okay? Gian? Versus the interest, that is 30. This is 407. Okay? Meron pang isang problem dyan, class. Uh, 
ilalagay ko, gagawin ko yung mas comprehensive ito, ilalagay ko ito dun sa actual na video na ito. Na? Yan. Okay. Sige. Let's proceed. May oras pa, no? Aha. Siguro dito muna ako, no? Dito tayo. Uh, book value per share. Nakita ko ito sa pinadala mo eh. No? Pinadala niyo. Madali lang ito, class. Uh, siguro tapos ito ng mga... Basta tapos yan. Okay? Again. Iniisip ko kung nandito. Kung ito ba pipiliin ko? Yung current liability o yung ano? So, madali lang kasi yung current liability. Dito na lang tayo. Sa book value per share. No? Diyan ka sa book value per share. Tandaan mo to ha, kasi mayroong mga hindi sinasabi ng libro, no? pero ginagawa ito sa actual computation. Ang book value per share class, ang unang tanong dyan, bakit nasa likod yan ng libro? Okay? Nasa likod yan ng libro class kasi, ano, uh, that is the book value, that is the book value per share no? ng isang kapag mag-liquidate na yung entity, kaya siya nasa likod. Okay? So the formula for that is the total stockholders' equity divided by the number of shout. The number of shout is the number of shares outstanding. Okay? To compute for the number of shares outstanding that is issued, issued plus subscribe minus the treasury shares. Issued plus subscribe minus the treasury shares. Okay? Yan yung number of shares outstanding. Nga lang class, pag straightforward ang computation mo nito, delikado ka. Bakit? Kasi class, ang total stockholders equity, okay? Ang stockholders equity sa pag-compute ng book value per share, hindi dyan kinoconsider ang subscription receivable. Okay? Following the trust fund doctrine, kasi hindi ka pwedeng mag-liquidate class na meron kang subscription receivable. Ano ibig sabihin? Singilin mo muna yan. Okay? Singilin mo muna o ibalik mo muna yan. Okay? Sa total stockholders equity para makapag-compute ka ng book value per share. Ano ibig kong sabihin? The total stockholders equity to be considered in the computation of book value per share kailangan walang outstanding subscription receivable. Saan mo ba ito nakikita ang subscription receivable? That is a contra to your subscribed capital stock. Para mas maging malinaw siguro. Punta ako sa problem. Okay. Yan. Nanapin natin si book value per share. Ayan. Okay. Dito class. Ayan. Sige. Bigyan kita ng exercise. No? Nasa 102 ako. Item 100. Okay. Board exam problem. Can you please compute the book value per share? Can you please compute the book value per share? What is the formula for the book value per share? Total stockholders equity divided by the number of shares outstanding. Paano makompute the number of shares outstanding? Issued plus subscribe minus treasury shares. Okay? Compute for Yan. Okay na, Jihan? Nakabalik na? Yan. 
So, yeah, thank you. So, John, magkano ang book value per share natin? Book value per share. Total stockholders equity divided by the number of shout. The number of shout is the number of shares outstanding that is issued plus subscribed minus treasury. Okay, so book last. Okay, gawin natin class ha. Ito yan. Bakit paborito itong problem na to? Tingnan mo class ha. The total stockholders equity is 2,300,000. Okay. The number of shout, the number of shares outstanding computing natin. Issued is 100,000. Okay. Tapos meron kang subscribe na 50,000. 500,000 divided by par value of 10. So, minus the treasury shares of 10,000. So, that is 100,000 plus 50,000 minus 10,000, 140,000. If you will compute this, this straight forward, which is 2,300,000 divided by 100, ano ulit ka? 2 million, magkano na ulit? 140, no? 2 million, 300,000 divided by 140,000. Ang lalabas na sagot mo ay? Magkano? 300,000 divided by 140,000. Ang lalabas na sagot mo is 16.42. Okay? Sige. Mabalik kita sa concept. Yan. Last reason. Following the trust fund doctrine, you cannot liquidate kapag meron kang outstanding subscription receivable. Okay? Okay? Kaya class, this total stockholders equity, kailangan walang subscription receivable yan bago ka makapag-compute ng book value per share. Okay. Balik tayo sa problem. Okay? So dito class, since merong subscription receivable na 200,000 dyan class, wag, kang mag wag mong gagamitin si 2.3 million. Ano gagamitin mo? Sinilin mo muna yan. Okay? Pag nasingin mo yan, tataas itong 2,300,000 mo. And that is the correct stockholders' equity in computing the book value per share. So this will be now 2,500,000 pesos. So your numerator is 2,500,000 divided by 140,000 number of shout. The correct answer is 17.86. Nakuha? 2,400,000, 2,500,000, paano na-compute yun? 2.3 plus this, ibalik mo, okay? So wala nang subscription receivable, 2.5 million na, divided by the number of shares outstanding, 100,000 plus 50,000 subscribe, minus treasury of 10,000, na that is 140. So 2.5 over 140, ang sagot is 17.86. Nasundan. Okay. Next, tuloy tayo dito. So, I will end at 9.40 class, ha? At 9.40 na. So, para ma-discuss ko lang yung mga kasunod. Game. So, class, pwede kang tanungin, class, kung magkano daw ang book value per share sa ordinary shares at book value per share sa preference shares. So madali lang yan. Total uh, ordinary shares, ordinary stockholders equity divided by the ordinary shares outstanding. Kapag naman book value per preference shares ang tanong, that is preferred stockholders equity divided by the number of preference shares outstanding. Okay? Ganun lang kasimple. Okay, class. Pero ang problema dyan, class, ito. <clears throat> Following the residual equity theory, at the time of liquidation, ang unang-unang binabayaran si preferred, no? preference stockholders equity. So para makumpute mo yung ordinary stockholders equity, dadaan ka muna dito sa preference shares. Stockholders preference stockholders equity. So if this is your total stockholders equity, kailangan bawasan mo yan ng preferred stockholders equity para makuha mo yung ordinary stockholders equity. Ang problema, ganun lang ba kasimple yun? Plus hindi. Meron tinatawag dyan na rules. Rules on allocation, tsaka rules on participation. Ganito yan, class. 
Ang rules and allocation, magkano ba ang ibabayad natin kay preference stockholders? One, kapag may liquidation value, ibigay mo ang liquidation value. Pag walang liquidation value class, gamitin mo ang par value, ang aggregate par value. Okay? Unang rule on allocation, pag may liquidation value, ibigay ang buong liquidation value. Pag walang liquidation value, <coughs> bigyan lang yan ng aggregate par value. <coughs> Next. If the preference shares are cumulative, bigyan mo yan ng dividendo. Okay? Lahat ng dividends in arrears, ibigay mo sa kanya. Kapag naman non-cumulative yan class, ibigay mo lang yung one-year dividend sa kanya. Nakuha, eto class ang pinaka-importante, yung number four. Sino yan? Si Dina. Ano yung Dina? Dividends in arrears. Sa problem-solving class, pag nakita mo si Dina, dividends in arrears, that's the time that rule number three and rule number rule number two and rule number two will apply. Kapag hindi mo nakita si Dina sa problem, dividends in arrears, hindi mag apply yung rule number two tsaka rule number three. Why? It is assumed na nabayaran na yung dividendo prior to liquidation. Ulitin ko. Rule number two and rule number three will only apply pag nakita mo si Dina. Dividends in arrears that is explicitly stated in the problem. Pag cumulative, ibigay lahat ng in arrears. Pag non-cumulative, ibigay lang yung one-year dividend. Pag hindi mo nakita si Dina sa problem, rule number two and three will not apply. Okay? Let's try solving problems here. Okay, let's now go to item 104 and 103. Okay? lang class, ah. To save time, no? To save time. Kokopyahin ko to sa Excel. Okay, dito ako ngayon. Game. Yes, dahil assume paid, Gian. Assume paid prior to liquidation. Huh? Okay. So dito class, there are two classes of shares here. There are two classes of shares. Okay? Preference tsaka si ordinary. The total stockholders equity here is 3,820,000. So this is 3,000,000. Uh, 820,000. Okay. Yan yung class, no? Game. Ang pinapakompute sa atin class, magkano ang book value per preference and ordinary? Hindi tayo makakapag-compute ng ordinary. Kasi kailangan mo munang bayaran si preference stockholders para malaman mo kung magkano ang residue. Yung residue is the Ordinary Stockholders Equity. Rule number one tayo. Bayad tayo sa preference shares. No? Stockholders Equity. Magkano ang babayaran natin? Meron bang liquidation value? Walang liquidation value. Pag walang liquidation value, gagamitin mo yung aggregate par value na dalawang milyon. So this is two million. Okay? Plus gamitin mo yung triangle approach. Ito yung ginagawa ko, triangle to. This is for preference this is for ordinary. Okay? Huwag mong susundan yung, yung presentation sa book. Matagal yun. Okay? Ganito ka. Ito yung total. Ayan yung puno. Di ba? 
Guhit ka. Mahirap lang gumuhit dito sa Excel. Eh. O yan. Ito yung preference. Okay? Bayaran natin aggregate par value na magkano? Dalawang million plus. Tuloy natin. Babayaran ba yan ng dividend? Hanapin mo muna si Dina. Nakita mo si Dina, ito, dividend in arrears for 3 years. Ibig sabihin plus, bayaran mo, ano, lahat o 1 year lang. Alamin mo kung cumulative o preference. Cumulative plus, cumulative dyan, bayaran mo ng buo. Magkano yan? Ilang taon? Tatlong taon. That is 2 million times 10% times 3 years. This is 600,000 pesos. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, ang ibabayad natin dito ay 2.6 million pesos. Ang may iwan kay ordinary is 3.82 minus 2.6. Magkano lang? That is 1 million 220,000 pesos. Magkano ang book value per share? That is 2.6 million, 2.6 million plus, ito yun, divided by the number of preferent shares outstanding. Magkano ang preference shout? Wala namang ibang binigay, kundi 20,000 lang, di ba? Divided by 20,000, the book value here is 130 pesos. Yan ang sagot sa 100 dito sa 104, magkano ang sagot? That is 1,220,000 pesos divided by the number of shares outstanding in ordinary which is only one, this should be 100,000 plus. Huh? It should be 100,000 pesos. So the answer is 12.2 for ordinary shares. Okay? Let's proceed. Proceed tayo. Nandun tayo sa 105 plus. 105. The total stockholders' equity here is still three million eight hundred twenty thousand. Okay. Then, preference na naman tayo. Preference na naman tayo. Caga ordinary. Okay. Caga ordinary. Okay. Tuloy natin class. Game. Preference. Meron bang liquidation value? Yes. Magkano? One twenty class. So, bigay mo ang liquidation value. So, that is 120. 120 times ito. Why compute nga ang class? 120 times 20,000. Would that be 2.4? 2.4, no? So, 2.4. So, this is 2,400,000. Okay? Next. Tanong class, chat box. Babayaran ba yan ng dividend? Yes or no? Babayaran ba ng dividend? Yes or no? Yes. Kasi nakita mo kala si Dina. Nasaan si Dina? Ayan o, dividends in arrears. Tanong, cumulative? Yes, cumulative. O, magkano bayad mo dyan? 600,000 din. That is 2 million plus. Ha? Ang basis class ng dividend, o, yung par value, hindi liquidation value. Ha? 2 million times 10% times 3 years, 600. Naruha. So this is 3.8. Uh, huh? This is, should be 3 million pesos. Okay? This should be 3.82 minus 3 million. That is 820,000 pesos. Okay? Yan class. So ang sagot mo dito, book value per share, that is 3 million divided by number of shout ni preference, which is 20,000. 20,000. Ang sagot mo dyan ay 150. Dito naman, 820,000 divided by 100,000. That should be 8.20. Okay? Next, 106. Again, this is 3,820,000 pesos. Okay? 3,820,000 pesos. Meron bang... Liquidation value, wala sir, walang liquidation value. Ibig sabihin, aggregate pa na 2 million yan. Okay? Next tayo class. Next. Meron bang dividend? Ay, teka, naputol yata ito. Balikan to class ha. Then, ito na siguro yung last problem na ito. Okay. Number 106. Okay. 
So, yan class that is 3,820,000 tapos may dividends in arrears na 3 years. Okay? Last problem natin class is 107, ha? 107. Copyahin ko na to. Okay? Para tiro-diretso tayo. Continue lang class, dalawang problem na lang. Game class, dito tayo ha. Dito class, may naputol ha. May naputol. Meron tong dividends in arrears ha. Meron tong dividends in arrears na 3 years. Itong 106 class ha. May dividends in arrears na 3 years. Okay, ako na lang muna mag-compute dito. 3,820,000 class. Walang liquidation value that is 2 million. Okay. Tapos dito naman, meron magbabayad ba ng dividend? Yes, kasi may dividend in arrears. Nandito yung class, naputol lang sa pagkapit. Okay? This is non-cumulative. Ibig sabihin, ang babayaran ko lang isang taon. So that is 2 million times 10% times 1 year lang class always. Kapag non-cumulative, this is 200,000. Okay. So this is 2.2, no? 2.2. Okay, class? Yan. Tapos magkano dito kay ordinary? Yung naiwan. That is 3.8 minus 2.2. That is 1620. Magkano book value per share? That is 2.2 million divided by 20,000 shares. 20, 1, 2, 3. That is 110. Dito naman kay ordinary. That is 1.6 million divided by 100,000 shares. That is 16.20. Okay, class. Last problem tayo. I need you to solve this problem. This is an actual board exam problem. Number 107. Can you please compute what is the book value? Dalawa class, ha? What is the book value per preference shares? And what is the book value per ordinary shares? Last problem, class. Okay? Book value per preference shares and book value per ordinary shares. So, yan. May sagot na, no? 100 tsaka 18.2. Tingnan natin, class, ha? Okay. So, the total stockholders equity here is 3,820,000. Okay? Sulat ko na lang dun. No? Pero hindi na kailangan. Okay. Preference tayo, class. Walang liquidation value, no? Walang liquidation value si preference. So, you use the aggregate per value of 2 million pesos. Okay. Yan. Bakit sa board exam problem? Tingnan natin last. Game. Dividend. Tanong. Babayaran ba to ng dividend? Yes or no? The answer is no. Kasi hindi mo nakita class si Dina. It is assumed that the dividends were already paid prior to liquidation. So meaning, dito, 3.2 million minus what? Minus 2 million. So this is 1,820,000 divided by 20,000 shares. Okay? But ganun. Mali. This should be 2 million. 2 million. Yan. Okay? So pa. Yan. Okay, so this should be 2 million divided by 20,000. Okay? That is 100. So dito naman class, that is 3.2 million minus 2 million, which is 1.8 to 2 million. And this is over 100,000 shares. Okay, that is 18.20. Sir? 
Can you repeat the 106? Four. Can you repeat the preference book value problem for 106? Okay. Dito sa 106, may nawala kasi dito sa pagkakopya ko, no? Dito sa 106, may nakalagay dyan na parang ganito. Dividends are in arrears for 3 years. Okay? So dito, magbabayad ng dividend since present si Dina. Ilang dividend? One year lang. Kasi class non-cumulative ito. Non-cumulative, one year. Kapag cumulative, ibigay lang. Okay? So this is non-cumulative. Okay? So dito class, wala. Kaya ito, lumabas yan sa board exam. Okay? Kaya class, pag sa board examination room, may naririnig kang nasan si Dina, nasan si Dina, classmate mo yun, class, classmate mo yun. Okay? Tingnan mo, tingnan mo, classmate mo yun. Okay, class, siguro, that's, end, that's, that's all for now. Bakit po add back? Oh, ito pa, sige, magtanong. Ah, Ina-add back natin si subscription receivable kasi the total stockholders equity to be used in computing for the book value per share, kailangan walang existing outstanding balance si subscription receivable. So as if siningil mo na, pag siningil mo yan, G yan, tataas ang stockholders equity mo ng 200,000 uh, given in the example kanina. Okay? So idadagdag mo siya. So pag nadagdag mo na, ibig sabihin wala ka ng outstanding subscription receivable. Ginagawa mo lang yan sa pag-compute ng book value per share. Ha? Kasi sa book value per share, that is the book value at that time of liquidation. And following that trust fund doctrine, kailangan wala kang outstanding subscription receivable prior to liquidation. Kaya ang total stockholders equity mo, kailangan wala kang nakaneto o nakabawas na subscription receivable. Okay? Okay, sige. Yan muna siguro. Sige, salamat. Nakita tayo by Wednesday. And marami pa tayong pag-uusap. Thank you.